La la la, I think I am live. Hello, people from everywhere. Let me know if you're hearing me okay. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening on Sunday. A rare live stream on Sunday from Avenue X. Hmm. Oh yay! So there's about 20 second latency if you want to know. Yes, it is perfect on time. I hope my internet will also <laughs> keep up. Corino, me too, me too. You can never be sure. So let's see if Sunday is a is a time that works better for people. I usually don't do it on weekend just because usually on the weekend I'm working on my videos. Uh, I tend to work more on the weekends than the weekdays so that I can have the time to do other things during the weekdays. But I do understand weekend will be easier for most of the people. Uh, yeah, because it would be weird for you to stay up <laughs> during the day watching live stream on a weekday. So I haven't been on live stream for two months, which isn't really that much. Only August and September, you know? Although it feels like it's been a long time because, because yeah, yeah, the travel was crazy. <sighs> Well, at 3 p.m. where you are, Nit, I don't know how to pronounce that, 0 0.3, it's not too bad, it's not midnight. <laughs> TGCF, Tianwen Sifu, does it have like a new season? No? Does it only have the first one, like years ago? <laughs> I watched the first one and then did do they like what? Have new ones now? I have no idea. Not following that very closely. <laughs> well, L. Wagner, um, unless I have the like function of not eating and still survive as a human, you know, <laughs> when I'm back in China, obviously I have to eat food there. It would be interesting if I could completely not eat for two months. That would be some kind of Guinness World Record. So, whether I like it or not, I would have to eat. So, yes, obviously. <laughs> really, you haven't been able to make to any live stream, okay? Okay, so now you're here. <laughs> it's on a Sunday. It seems to be a right choice to do that. I know. I should have. I mean, basically for the traffic's sake, right? I should have done it on weekends. I'm just like... I still don't, do not care. <laughs> and I was like, what works better for me? And, and then, you know, but this time it's because she, uh, Thursday I had a video out, so it would be weird to have a video out at the same time having a live stream. <laughs> like, what are you trying to do? Algorithm of YouTube will, will get very confused. So yeah, but in the future, maybe we can do it on Sunday. I don't know. It'll be weird for me, but I'll, I'll figure out. And, um, I did put in the title that we have a, live, a giveaway. So today we're going to do at some point, I hope I can wrap this up in two hours. So finish it by midday, my time. And during the time, I'll find some time to do that giveaway and, and I'll just scroll through people. And hopefully you'll live in places where you can receive mail from Canada. I mean, this makes it really expensive, but anyway, it does not matter um, that I can, I can mail it to you. So during the live stream, I will, I'll be going over the chat and randomly pick a person and you email me, uh, at my official email, which you can find on my channel and then I'll ship it to you. Just the pair. <laughs> this is the only thing I brought back as bookmarks. Yes. From Hong Dian. They're official merchandise of Untamed. Lan Wang Ji is a bit. Well, he refuses to stand up straight. Wei Wuxian is. Um, so they have this drama, they have uh, mm, near 
Varna in Fire, yes, and I think Zhi Fo Zhi Fo as well. A couple of others, not not a lot. I think also like for Yu Fei somehow, it also has this type of bookmarks. Not not every drama, and this is properly made in Dongyang and Hengdian, so it's <laughs> it's actually made there. Okay, so. I think if you've watched my vlog of the Qin Palace, um, I filmed the souvenir shop on the exit, and you should be able to see that in the vlog, that wall of bookmarks. Um, yeah, so in this live stream, we're gonna mostly talk about, I mean, you can ask me questions about <laughs> my China trip, but things that I probably wouldn't have time to put into vlogs or don't really have any footage of but are interesting you know overall about my travel back to China and then we can talk about what's going on in dramas right now I know there are a lot of dramas airing or has finished airing in the last say a month or two that I haven't had time to <laughs> to get to you know you wonder why you don't have 48 hours a day mm. and yeah that would be our live stream Yeah. In an ideal world, I want to buy. I would want to buy a lot of things and everything from there. But international travel, when you are not flying first class, making the luggage, a, 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 an art. Like the packing, pack it, is just an art. Um, I have gotten very good at it. Uh, I think the international travel limit by air, in in like normal economy ticket is 23k 23 kilo for your checked bag and my bag this time when i weighed it was when i was checking in from shanghai it was 23.1 i think i have uh, i have i have like i have the ability to hold up a suitcase just by my hands and tell whether it has gone over the 23 limit or not it's one of those uh, magic abilities i've developed so <laughs> just about perfect yeah i wish i had 48 hours a day like i said if i had I, that, that would be a i would be able to do what i do <laughs> when i was back in china at the same time I'll watch all the dramas which you know there, there are so many dramas, and I just couldn't get to them. <laughs> yeah, the China vlog would be the, the unusual thing on my channel, just because, you know, <laughs> I haven't been traveling for four years. For the last four years, this is the first time. So, um, and I decided to go to Hengdian. Otherwise, there really wouldn't be that many things I could film and put on camera anyway. Um, it's not super high quality. And in an ideal world, I would definitely want to actually have two or three two or one more person with me so that we can actually film things that are done by multiple people instead of just one. When I'm the only person, I have to be the person holding the camera. So there are shots that you just can't do. Uh, also, I didn't bring my camera with me and it was a good <laughs> and clever decision. Um, I used everything. I filmed everything on my phone. So everything you see from end of july up to uh pretty much the like a couple of days ago you know you can tell once i got back i have the usual room that you can see in my videos everything in between that is is just like done on my phone which is not ideal but it's workable it's not too bad and it was the right decision overall although it's not the best quality it allows me to actually film stuff. Otherwise I wouldn't be able to. <laughs> like the lightest weight camera I have is not that friendly for me to operate it in the heat while I'm walking like <laughs> for like five hours a day in 38 degrees weather. It's just not gonna work, no way. Just the phone is enough. So make do with, if you have multiple person team, that wouldn't be a problem, but you know, the best I can do. And honestly, I don't think that there are actually that many people actually filming Hengdian the way I did it. <laughs> Even on Chinese social media, I was like, just like checking what are the other 
videos people have made of Hong Dian, right? Um, really not that many people actually have filmed very ex extensively from park to park to park what they are and I guess most people if they are just traveling there they probably take a few shots take a few photos they wouldn't really be going around with a gimbal and you're trying to film the whole place there. and also most likely they're not really dramaland people because if you're actually dramaland people working and making dramas you wouldn't bother filming those places you, you'd be disgusted and then just like having because you're living there and you spend your working time every day there and you don't really would look at it in the very uh you know like having high interest way you're just gonna be oh, this is my workplace it's so boring and most of my bad memories of being shouted at by whatever my superior happens here so you wouldn't really want to film it so it ends up being it's some places that's in every drama in chinese drama land in period dramas but somehow people just don't really <laughs> put it like as a place you know you go around and film what is here and there very little actually is on online like a tour video uh, yeah it's just in dramas so i think it's a really fun thing that i did uh, although it was painful for those three days oh. so hope that's uh at least fun to watch you know for you and if it's fun enough that's good to me that's like all all, all that matters <laughs> And if you ever want to travel there, I mean, you can ask me here in the chat so that I can uh, I can help you out as much as I can. Now that I've been there, I know what it's like. For international travelers, it will be trickier than Chinese national, but you know, at least it's some kind of <laughs> information from a real person that is pretty recent. So I went there on the 18th, September 18th, and I left on the 21st, 18th, 19th, 20th, three days. 18th is like half a day and then 19, 20 uh, are full day. 21st up to about three o'clock, two o'clock in the afternoon, I was in Hengdian and then I went to the airport. So those were the time during which I filmed everything that you see in my vlogs. <laughs> you wouldn't mind, like, it, uh, uh, the mark is still here, uh, my sunburn. It's still visible. Can you see that? You can still see that, right? The ticket band of the uh, Chunqiu Tangyuan, the ones that are right now uh, on my channel, the recent one and the next one would all be on the day, which is September the 20th. That sunburn. <laughs> still quite visible. It's been how long? Over a month. Yeah. So let me look at the chat for a bit and see if people are asking me. I wonder if you've done cross. I remember the title. <laughs> I have no idea. I couldn't couldn't find like those. I couldn't find the information on a lot of the dramas I see when I was in Hong I think one reason might be that small productions so small that they're not promoting at this stage because they're just filming it. Right. Maybe on until they actually about to release it, they're gonna talk about it. The other thing is, um, they may change their title. Because a lot of the titles are working titles and by the time the drama actually go goes out it could be a totally different title so you wouldn't even know really at this stage which like even when they say this is this right if they change the title then who, who the hell knows <laughs> which one it is so that's like a common thing in Chinese drama unless it's a high profile like the Liu Zhou Ji, Du Huanian, Si Fang Guan because it's led by very well-known actors and no matter how they change the name you always know like at different stages what their names are so you know but the smaller productions you wouldn't be able to thank you ekina 1314 is that <laughs> thank you for super chat 20 dollars <laughs> i'm just looking at your name thank you is that a pair that's dancing yeah so i how long were in china end of very end of july to 18th of this month so less than 90 days more than 80 days in between that i think 
will you be going back? It depends on if work shows up because I may have some work I need to do next year. But it totally depends on how that gets scheduled. Right now, it's all not confirmed yet. So <laughs> like we were not at a stage yet to know exactly how the time is going to work out. But hopefully, hopefully. Any celebrities there? No. <laughs> it's a 1.4 billion human beings country. It's going to be easier to get um, lottery ticket winning than <laughs> running to a celebrity on the street. <laughs> no. What kind of work is it? Secret. <laughs> not at liberty to discuss. <laughs> but definitely not some crazy spy work. Don't worry about that. You have so much stamina. <laughs> yeah, I think it's just because I really am interested. Otherwise, I wouldn't really be motivated to do it either. Um, but also just because... Hmm, I don't know. When it's necessary, I have high tolerance of things. If it's unnecessary, I have zero. <laughs> My tolerance is very flexible. It totally depends on the situation. Krivitao? Oh, I don't know how to pronounce that name. Thank you for super chat. It's an adorable fox. <laughs> Separate the first super sticker from... Ah, oh, okay. That's the first one. Okay, so I guess I'll celebrate. <laughs> I have no idea like how the stream thing work in terms of like, what is a super sticker? And I know YouTube these days are doing shorts, right? You're supposed to like do shorts on like all, all my like other YouTube friends are, are like, you should do shorts. You should even like have a separate channel that's like just shorts. I'm like, yeah, but what do I do? Like I talk about Chinese dramas, like, like in 15 seconds, what can I do? <laughs> in shorts. <laughs> and like that's just like uh adding workload on things that's unnecessary for me. <laughs> so couldn't figure out um for me what's what's gonna I mean if I really wanna do I probably can find something to, to do about that, but I'm like I'm too lazy. What is the probability a foreigner can get into it's uh po it's possible, but um probably have a lot of uh details you need to work out the type of like visas and permits and this and that it probably would be very hard for you to just like today pack up and leave and get and, and, and let's try our luck yeah you have to already have a plan of sorts and have contact and have kind of knowing what you're gonna do to end up like arima when you're talking about working in china because for foreigners it's always like that there are a lot of procedures and stuff and license and this and that you need to get so it wouldn't be it's not an open market basically you can just go and do whatever there's a lot of a uh, lot of restrictions even when you are say set up com even when you have set companies set up and then you know working in productions there's still limits of what you can do i think for media production you actually as a foreign national you cannot own a company in china that's a media production. You need to have a uh, like the legal representative of that company being a Chinese. I mean, you can actually be the real person who is running it, but you need basically legally it's under another Chinese national's name. It cannot be a foreign person running a media company in China. That wouldn't work with the regulation, I think. So a lot of those things. <laughs> You know, why, why China, China, you know, like with this type of like media content creation, it's always being highly censored and just, just think as a foreigner, right? It, it wouldn't make sense for you to just go in there and have, <laughs> have a company and do whatever you want. That wouldn't work. I think, I think those people who are suggesting is just like, they're totally looking at YouTube as a business because a lot of people who are running channels, they're looking at it as proper business, right? It's revenue, money earning. And so once you think like that, then you have to think the multiple ways of basically increasing your income, uh, doing ads, doing sponsorship with other. So obviously you would want more, uh, points <laughs> to, to get the money in and that would make sense. 
um, to me, my YouTube has really not really become like a, my money making machine because you see like how lazy I'm uh, at <laughs> trying to monetize stuff or like I hardly get any um, right, sponsorship in any way. I think like that this year only did like what the the, the glass <laughs> and that's that's the only one. Um, I mean, I get emails um, from from stuff, but most of them are really weird, right? Apart from VPN, which I think makes sense, uh, like people like there, there's a company that constantly contacts me that they sell fake roses. <laughs> like I, I'm like, how did you even find me? Like, how, what kind of search word would you put into Google? or anywhere to find a YouTuber and you think would be a good place to advertise your fake rose, <laughs> dry rose, fake rose, whatever, and ended up like looking at me. <laughs> How does that happen? <laughs> so I, I get weird emails like that too. So yeah. Hmm. So let's just talk a little bit about my travel first and then we're going to talk about dramas ongoing and then that will be it. Um, you can type out your questions about certain parts of the, uh, uh, the China travel. I'll, I'll see if I can catch them. <laughs> yes, you do DIY flowers. But that's on my second channel. And anyway, maybe that's the reason, huh? Okay, silk flower. I didn't even think about that. Like, see how, 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 how numb I am to basically like ways of earning money. If I want to put my energy into that, I probably can just you know, increase the income for a bit, but I'm like, I am just so lazy <laughs> at, at all the effort I would have to put into extra work. <clears throat> so, uh, language stuff in a while. Uh, language videos totally depends on dramas. If there's a suitable drama that I can talk about stuff that attach to it, then it works. Otherwise, just by thinking about it on itself, it's just, again, too much work. And like I said, these days there are professional uh, ways of getting like language learning that is so good. I don't think it needs me. You know, you have Duolingo, which is like cheap and free. You almost like can do anything with that, with any language. So why would you need a YouTuber to teach that? <laughs> <laughs> and 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 like they already have it ready right so that probably wouldn't be so uh, making sense for me to do <sighs> all years hopefully in theater is AC what is that I haven't uh, spirit animal really that's weird Spirit animal usually are like, you know, animals. That's why it's cool. You know, a wolf, a snake, a badger, a, an eagle, you know, it's cool. They have something humans don't have. Me, I'm just a human, how boring. Imagine that. Don't even have fur. Oh. <clears throat> <laughs> that ships to the US. Wow, that's really, really complicated. Uh, that I don't know. Because I, I get my silk stuff all just from China's Taobao. But that's because I have Taobao account, I have Alipay, and then I can speak Chinese. So I just do it there and ask them to ship it to a mid sort of shipping company, and the company ship it to me. If you don't have those, it's a little bit tricky. Um, but I did do a advertise for a company that does it for foreign people. So if you want to pick things from Taobao, you tell them what you want to buy, they buy it for you and they ship it to you with DHL and UPS. I think it's called Talk Commerce or TikTok Talk Commerce. I, I, in one of my previous videos, the during this year, I kind of promoted it for them for a bit. That probably is the easiest way if you want to get Chinese made silk thread shipped to you in other places in the world when you don't know Chinese and you don't have Alipay. So, Chinese travel, somebody earlier asked me, uh, Hongya Cave. <laughs> oh, the stories about Hongya Cave. 
um, I know the ins and out about the, the, the creation of that place. Yeah, <laughs> it's a very interesting developing project back in the 90s already, I think. Early 2090s when it was first just like a city slum on the cliff, like close to the river. And the developer guy, a person who is actually the owner of a very famous hot pop brand in Chongqing, she's a lady and she um, bought that part and decided to uh, renovate it. I don't think initially anybody expected that place to ever become the Hongya Caves, uh, such a popular tourist destination as it is today. Back then, nobody. Nobody really, like not even the person who, is, who developed it really thought about that. Um, but it was not expensive, it's cheap, it's like slum really. So they kind of dismantled it and rebuilt everything. Um, and then it gradually became famous in recent years due to its night view. When you have the lights up, it looks very much like that view in is it Spirited Away? The, 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 the Miyazaki uh, animation. That spa and um, hot spring place. And one of the reasons it got popular. It looks very good. If you ever travel to Chongqing, my suggestion to you is don't go into Hongyadong. Usually it's very crowded. And once you get in, you'll realize it's a very dirty, crowded, not really anything worth watching and things are super expensive place. I would suggest you just stay on the bridge, which is there's a bridge that you can see that's connecting to that, the red bridge. Actually, I have photos. I should just show you. <laughs> Why not? Because um, I put a few photos on the slideshow that I was thinking whether I should talk about to so that thing. If you're looking at this, that bridge, the bridge and then at the end of the bridge is Hongyadong. I took the shot during the day because that evening I had to go to other places. I couldn't shoot it on the evening, but you know what that place is. So um, I would suggest you stay on the bridge, look at the view or at the other end of the bridge. So on the opposite end of the river, there is the uh, tank like building is Chongqing's opera house which is looking at Hongyadong. And they have built a couple of platforms and along the river walkway that's really well built and actually quite nice. You should be standing on that side in the evening looking at Hongyadong. And that's the best view. You can take the best pictures, best angles, it looks the best and it's safe for you. <laughs> you know, don't actually go into Hongyadong because once you go in there, you can't see it and it's actually not pretty inside. Also, being a very really responsible YouTuber, if you ever travel to Chongqing and you want to go to Hongyadong, my suggestion is don't go into it. Because that place actually never gone, um, this is not a secret, everybody who's in city planning in Chongqing knows, that place is, <laughs> when they had to pass fire departments permit and licensing before they opened for business, it actually didn't pass for all the regulations of fire department's regulation of architecture and whatever. It didn't pass. It has a lot of hazards and possible problems that just because of the nature of the structure of the buildings, there's no way you can actually rem do ramification. Like, there's no way you can actually make it following the regulation and safe and still exist due to the actual structure of the building. Um, so, if you want Hongyadong to be in operation as a business place, it has to be dangerous when it comes to fire hazard. Otherwise, it wouldn't exist because just because it cannot in any way be solved. It's like a physically impossible to solve problem. So, there was a lot of complicated things that happened around the licensing and, and finally getting the permit um, for that Hongyadong thing. And eventually it became like a political sort of wrestling between different parties in a high level of government, in local Chongqing government. And it, it eventually passed, but the person who, um, but the fire department person was very unhappy about it. He was like, this is not my responsibility. If shit happens in the future, 
don't count, put it on my head because I didn't say it's going to pass. And even till today, it's, it's the same. So, Hong Ya Dong <laughs> from my dad who is in city planning, right? He, he's like, don't ever go in there, <laughs> right? You can just be outside and look at it, but don't ever go in there because if shit happens, you can't get out. <laughs> That's a place if fire happens first, it's, it's, it's likely to get really bad very quickly and then you cannot get out physically. No way of you safely getting out of there. <laughs> and because if it's crowded, there are a lot of people, it would be impossible for you to get out in time if it's a big fire. So for all my <laughs> channel watchers, I know this is not good for Chongqing's tourism, but I'm just saying, if you ever travel to Chongqing, Hong Ya Dong is a perfectly okay place to go to, just don't go in there. Like you can stand on the street looking up to it, or you can stand on the bridge looking at it. You can stand across the river looking at it, just don't go in. <laughs> it's just that particular part. If you ever travel there, you'll know why it is impossible to get out. Once you get in Hong Ya Dong, you actually are in it in the elevator because it's right on the hill and this side is river. There's little space for it to have like a proper sort of exit that has a lot of ways of running around for you to get out. It's just like a very narrow space of elevator and like multiple levels, I think like seven, eight levels. And it's all very enclosed inside. <laughs> and on the other side is the cliff, you know? Like it can't just like climb out of a window and try to jump off. And it's like looking at eight levels. <laughs> so um, my suggestion is if you ever travel there, don't go in. Just stay on the outside and look at the view and then be done with it. Really, it's not that. Once you get in, it's gonna kill your, it's gonna kill, kill, kill the, uh, all the imagination because it looks quite, um, Mm, meh and crowded. <laughs> you can climb. <laughs> you can try that. Yeah. <laughs> no. It is such that really it's very impossible for it to get out. I've been in there. I know exactly what it's like, and I know like yeah, if shit happens, <laughs> like there's no way to run. There's no way you can run. So, don't go in. Other things about Chongqing, I mean, Chongqing is just Chongqing, right? <laughs> if you ever want to travel there, it's worth going for a day or two in the big city. And then you probably would want to travel outside of the city to, to its other places that are more well known as tourism destination, like mountains and, and cultural heritage stuff that are all outside of the main city. <clears throat> I've been there before once and it's enough. I don't need to go to Hong Ya Dong again. Only tourists go there. Local Chongqing people are like, oh, we, we don't go there. <laughs> you know, the typical thing, that's, that's Hong Ya Dong at the end of the bridge. Let's see what we have. Cause I have some cute photos. This is on the opposite end of the river, the opposite side of the Hong Ya Dong. So on the other side of the river and right under the Chongqing Opera House, there are many old ficus, I think. Ficus tree, yeah. Let me just see that. Cause I, I took photos of a couple of trees that are just incredible looking. Their roots are like that. And you just, and that tree is so cool. We have a lot of this type of trees in Chongqing. They're like witches grow with crazy. That's Heng Dian. Let's just see. I think I have a couple of more like, there's, there's a tree photo that's impressive. I have to show that to you. Ooh, look at that. Those roots are just like so incredible. Um, yeah, that's the Chongqing skyline now. Very famous, Ruffles City. Crazy building. Uh, that, <laughs> I wanna show you. That's after I got the sunburn and that's also across the river. And the tree had that thing <laughs> right and it reminds me of Tang Lan Jue, you know the hole in the tree when she goes in and look into it you can see the future <laughs> what else do we have i put a couple of pictures in this and yeah that that tree also is impressive look at the room 
the roots is, the roots are just like insane. <laughs> Imagine if one day people want to uproot this this tree, like how they're gonna do it. <laughs> I don't think there's a there's a viable way for you to do it. Just like look at how crazy. So that's that photo, though. Yeah. Okay. Also, the <laughs> this is a mall that's not so far from where I live in Chongqing, and it has this crazy uh, start statue of a uh, huge squirrel on the outside. It's like three, four floors tall, and its tail is very big. It it's standing on its tail and it's like doing that. If you're looking at the squirrel from the inside of the mall, it's like. Yeah, I don't know. People just do this type of things. Hey, stream love slideshow is weird. Look at that. <laughs> That's that um thing that I put my hand in. So weird. It doesn't go with the normal. This oh, this is a DQ cake. Dairy Queen. I find it like all the brands whether it's KFC or McDonald's or whatever as international fast food when it gets to China they all localize in the weirdest way you never see like cutesy things in Dairy Queen right in, in Canada <laughs> they never do that it's like for 10,000 years it's the same blizzard thing and they never just change the menu it's always the same thing and in China all types of weird things <laughs> and, and they do it every day is like a different thing next week you go and it's different cakes they've done <laughs> and that's the mall the squirrel is not in shot it's right outside of the frame and in the mall they have a botanic garden in the middle <laughs> and it has like bridges on top that you can you can get in like i don't know things go crazy in china Is Chongqing the place where, well, those post volume? Yeah, 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 yeah. It is the one that has many layers, many lights at night, and looks quite intense on the water. What's the meaning of this girl? I have no idea. Maybe it's just like for fun. And then in that mall, there was this giant panda. I visited it twice. First time, there was a panda. Second time, the panda is removed and they per changed it into a tiger. So again, <laughs> you know, uh, yeah, that's a DQ cake too. I'm mean, like, what <laughs> are people thinking in China? Uh, what else? Yeah, these are just, uh, this is a very famous library. Yes, bookstore, bookstore or library? Actually, bookstore in Shanghai. That has become a Wang Hong Da Ka. It's like internet, on internet famous popular place that everybody on Xiaohongshu, you know, is going there and taking a photo of it. It looks really cool, right? But um, because it's too famous, it's filled with tourists. You can actually read a book quietly there and hope like you can actually. And that's the uh, Starbucks roastery in Shanghai, the largest Starbucks flags, flagship store, I think, in the world. It literally takes a whole building around a wrong building that's like standing in the middle of the street. It's very recognizable. And it has this huge conveyor belt thing of all the roasted beans being packaged and then going on this belt around this whole building. And then it actually supplies, I think, Shanghai, Jiangsu, Zhejiang, I think all those couple of nearby provinces, all their Starbucks in-store coffee. So they're actually in production. While it looks cool, it's actually still in production for real. So if you ever go to uh, Shanghai, you should try the, uh, the, the steroids version of Starbucks. And the menu in this Starbucks is different from all the other Starbucks in the world, I think. It's unique and it's not like any other normal. Like you can't get a flat white, you can't get a normal cappuccino in this. They don't sell that. They sell all kinds of weird things. <laughs> and you're like, what? And they actually do it in front of you and they have, they have like different ways of making coffee that's pretty 
intense. I think it, you can actually fit like a thousand people if you want into this one co coffee shop. It has two levels, two floors, and if it's packed, it's like crazy. <laughs> the biggest um, coffee shop in, in the in, in Starbucks, like that's actually in production, some kind of crazy machinery. <laughs> so I, I never know, coffees can be this crazy. Yeah, I don't know what this is, but it, it, it was running when I was there. And that's just a very wide angle shot of what it looks like inside. The craziest, so you can actually sit on the bar table almost like, and the person will be making the coffee right in front of you. Depending on which type you want, it's actually a very unusual experience of Starbucks coffee. Let's just see that. And it smells good in this place, I tell you. It smells really, really good. <laughs> That's one thing. Um, and um, and I think the cheapest coffee they have in there is like 48 or 58 RMB, which is, let's say 10 Canadian dollars around that. Like that's the cheapest, cheapest one you can find. Hmm. Another way of getting the money out of your pocket, hey? So crazy things in China. Yeah, I was like, a Mao Tai Latte. A Mao Tai Latte, I tell you what, I, from, the, from, from the day it went live in China till the day I leave, left China, I was trying to get a Mao Tai Latte, I couldn't. It was out everywhere. In Chongqing, I couldn't find it. They were like, uh, we are not gonna have the new so batch of things coming in on this day. And I was like, on this day, I already leave for, <laughs> for Hengdian. So I'm like, okay, uh, I guess when I come back, because in Hengdian, I can, I, be, I was traveling. There was like little time I can actually go to a Luckin Coffee. And when I got back to Chongqing, sold out. When I got to Shanghai, sold out. So the Mao Tai Latte from Luckin Coffee, even when I was in Chongqing, uh, in China the whole time, I couldn't buy one because I couldn't get one. That's like how crazy it was. Um, and then they have a competition brand called Cotti, C-O-T-T-I coffee, which is founded by a guy who used to work in Luckin Coffee and didn't get on, get along well with Luckin Coffee and then kind of like, you know, decided to come out, get out of it and then create his own brand. So he had a enemy brand <coughs> of Luckin Coffee. As soon as the Mao Tai uh, coffee came out, his brand announced a rice coffee. So using the Dongbei rice milk to make that coffee and that's the only one i managed to get before i left like i managed to buy a uh, rice coffee it's pretty good actually the rice latte is really really good and and the even funnier thing is when it's uh, when this coffee coffee is in competition with lucking one thing it does is it's always one rmb cheaper than lucking so the Luckin Coffee's Mao Tai Latte is 19 RMB. I think it's just one yuan higher than the normal 18 price of their normal latte. <coughs> and then the, the Wu Chang Da Mi, <laughs> the Wu Chang Rice Latte from Cardi, it was 18 point something. So they priced it just a tad bit below Luckin. Um, it was funny. <laughs> These things when you see it in actual operation in China, you're like, anyway, so I managed to get a rice latte in Shanghai. So I didn't completely miss out the whole crazy competition of coffee brands in China. And this time there's one thing that I noticed because I haven't been back since summer 2019. So it's exactly four years later. And I could tell you, Four years later, when I'm back in Beijing, Shanghai, Chongqing, these couple of places, all the major malls of these cities, they all have a couple of brands that are in all the malls. So they basically carpeted China's um, big cities within four years. And those are all brands that did not exist 
four years ago when I left. <laughs> when I left, these brands did not exist. There was no name of them in the whole business world. Now they're in every freaking mall. That's so crazy about how fast things change and happen in China. Um, and these are all coffee brands. And one is called Manor, Manor Coffee, which is now in every freaking mall in China. It wasn't there at all. <laughs> it did not exist four years ago. And there's a brand called Seesaw, which is also ev everywhere. Like I've seen it in so many places. There's a brand called M Stand. Somehow people like M. M Stand. That's in every mall. And these are, and there's another one, I think, called, oh, what's the name of it? It has a, like an Italian name. It's not so um, carpeted, but anyway, it's still there. So <laughs> now when I go into all the malls in all the cities, I'm like, every mall has an M stand and it has a Manor coffee. It, it did not exist. The whole brand did not exist four years ago. And that's how it works in China. And I'm thinking, I mean, if I go back to China now every year, that probably wouldn't really appear to be so obvious. But say if something happens and I don't go back to China for another four years, by the time I go, probably like half of those brands would be gone. They'd be dead and they'd be replaced by other things. And not just in coffee, in a lot of other things like a clothing brand. Like there's a brand that's being, the spokesperson is Yu Shuxin. Wow, it's in freaking every mall. It's called MLB and it wasn't there before. <laughs> and then there was those uh, stationary for kids and for girls, which also did not exist four years ago. And now it's in every mall. Oh, and also the pop mart thing, you know, all those figurines that you can, you can, you can buy, but you don't know which one you actually get with the money. That ridiculous thing <laughs> is also in every freaking mall. I'm like, wow. You know, in Canada, nothing changes. Um, the restaurants that I, went to when I first came here in 2012 are still here in Winnipeg. It's still the same name. They didn't even do any renovation. Uh, the still same menu, still same waiters <laughs> and waitress, like a decade. And you know them, like you go in, you walk into the restaurant, you don't even have to talk. And they're like, ah, you're here. You want that, that, that. I'm like, yeah. And they don't change menu for a decade. And that's how it works in like Winnipeg. Whereas, whereas in China, Every coffee brand has a new thing on every week. <laughs> and the amount of things people come up with, like when it comes to like autumn fall, they, uh, fall, they start to do related fruit, special just for the season for two weeks and it's gone. Like they just do that for every brand. Every day you're just bombarded with things people create out of nowhere. <laughs> like, what? This is the new fashionable thing? Okay. And the next week is a different thing. That's how commerce works in China now. It's just, I mean, you can, you can argue it's, if it's good and bad, but it's pretty overwhelming, <laughs> particularly to somebody who's lived four years in Winnipeg where nothing changes, nothing. Okay. Like even pumpkin, pumpkin spice latte, you know, it's like it comes back every year at the same time and it tastes exactly the same. And it's just like one pumpkin spice latte. It's not like every week you create and this week is pumpkin spice, next week is chestnut, next week is apple, next week is whatever, pomegranate. Like that's how it works in China and it never repeats. It's like when it's done, it's done. <laughs> they think about something weird next time, like Mao Tai and rice. <sighs> I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if people put rubber in coffee, really, <laughs> in China. Like they can put anything, maybe a scorpio or I don't know, like bugs next time. What, what else do you know? You know, like potato, whatever. <laughs> That's just how it works in China is what, what, what is that? You know, <laughs> every day you go on the street, you look at something, you're like so confused. Well, I didn't put it on my uh, live stream slideshow, but I have to, I have to show a photo, which is in Hengdian. There are many like mm, lemonade selling place in summer. I mean, understandably it's hot. <laughs> and there's this brand on its very famous foodie street. And I bought this lemonade called Shou Da Zha Nan, lemonade, <laughs> lemon tea, which literally means beating 
garbage man. <laughs> and the garbage man is the, the the word that to describe basically jerks, um, guys who are who are um, you know like yeah whatever. <laughs> And it's a lemonade that's named after beating bad guys. And then the weird thing is, for every lemonade they sell, they give you one tiny mahjong. See, like people do that weird thing in China. Like, look at that. Let's see if it can uh, focus. Can you see the mahjong on the top of it? So it will put that into the lid. And it's a random one. They just give it to you. And I was like, why do you give people mahjong? Right, that's really confusing. And I know Panasonic is really bad at all the focusing. Anyway, and I was like really curious about why they do this. And they were like, just take it. You know, like next time you buy, we give you a different one. <laughs> and, and on Weibo, I just sent out this post. And I'm like, why do they do that? And people were like, so that you can collect it. And then a card is like 54 cards, right? A pack of cards. But for Mahjong, Mahjong there are 108. <laughs> so if somehow you are the weird person who wants to collect things, <laughs> you have 108 mahjong playing pieces that you need to collect so that presumably you're gonna drink the lemon tea till the end of time <laughs> from them. <laughs> and I'm like, what? Really? This is what happens in China, right? Um, <laughs> it's, uh, it's not shocking, but it's just fun. For somebody who, who, who lives in, right now, lives in like the boring Canada where, where things just don't change. And. Xinrong <laughs> yes, it's still open in Winnipeg. Like I said, you know, they're all here, like the Hanji, Xinrong Fa, they, they've been here for like what, decades and they don't change. And you can do like. I recently actually just ordered from them but it's, I didn't go to their restaurant. These days they mostly just do a uh, take, take out. You just call like, like, you know, DoorDash or skip the dish or other app. And they, yeah, <laughs> they bring that up to, to your doorstep. So it's, Xinrong Fa is still there. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you left it in 2009, wow. So it's been how many years? 14 years since you left and it's still in the same place it is and pretty much same menu. And during the uh, pandemic, they just basically only do takeout. But the location is still there. They did renovate that strip mall, <laughs> that whole strip of malls where Xinrong Fa is at. They renovated it once just to make it look, you know, like nicer, but the things didn't change. They're still in their old position. That's just how boring <laughs> and not moving right? Canada is. Whereas in China, four years not going back, it's like, what the heck is going on? Oh, and also right now in China, you honestly, seriously don't need cash anymore. Like nobody uses cash. Everyone is on digital. Like to the level of beggars on street are also just begging with your digital money. Like they don't, they don't carry like they don't ask for real money, you know, like coins and no. They're just like, scan my money, <laughs> just scan this or, and give me two RMB. <coughs> That's how it works now in China. It's like nobody uses cash in any way. You can't, can't even, like you can, but you know, people are like looking at you weird. Why are you using cash? Um, you, 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 you go on subway with Zhifubao or Weixin. You go on buses with Zhifubao and Weixin. You buy park tickets, you buy it like with Zhifubao and Weixin and obviously you shop with Zhifubao and Weixin and <sighs> yeah, <laughs> it's no cash. I, when I was back in China, I didn't use cash at all. Unless like I intentionally want to use it. Otherwise you just need your phone. <laughs> you just need your phone. And even like for delivery services, they, they have gotten to the place, uh, the, the level of like automated level of parcels arriving at the place and how it gives you a code, how you go and pick it up and how it all functions. It's <laughs> and like, wow, I mean, it's efficient, but it's crazy. 
you, you see my xi cha video, right? It's just so normal now in China. Like you don't have to show up at all for anything. You just like do it at your home. Like I want this coffee, coffee, blah, blah, blah. And in this coffee shop and go and make it. And once you're done, you're like, oh, okay, I am number 19 in the, in the queue. So like I can wait for five minutes before I leave. And then, then you know, you just, just, when it says it's almost ready, you start to move outside of your apartment, whatever you go to that place, pick it up and run away. <laughs> you don't have to talk to the person who's making it at all. <laughs> Everything is just like on crazy level of automation, which I mean, can be a good thing, can be a bad thing, depends on how you look at it. But if you don't have a phone, you're dead in China. You can't go anywhere. You can't do anything. Nothing happens. You have to have a phone. That's the problem if for elderly people, for certain like foreign travelers, right? You just land it there. It's like my visa card is not working because nobody uses a <laughs> uses a, like a credit card machine. Like everything is just scan my QR code. It's actually not very foreigner friendly. I think they need to next step develop something like a temporary Alipay or temporary WeChat Pay, which is like when you're traveling in China, you can just easily use it. Otherwise, it's just like too hard for foreign travelers. <laughs> And everything is tied to your, it's crazy. It's like, oh, and yeah. And all, all kinds of like identification. My mother goes to a supermarket to buy one bunch of like green spring onion. And only the only thing she needs to carry with her is her face. <laughs> she doesn't even need a phone. She goes to, she goes to the supermarket and when she pays it, she just stand and just, just like, Pick the one, scan your face. She scans scans her face and it goes to her Alipay account. So she doesn't need to carry anything with her. She literally just goes to the supermarket, look at the camera. <laughs> and um, you get your spring onion. Yeah. Huh. That's how that's how like we, we are in the cyber world now in China, in China. And also like our like where we live. There, there's a security guard. It's a big compound, multiple buildings, and there, it has gardens, it has gates. <laughs> so at the gates, it's also scanning my mother's face. And so my mom and my dad is like, they don't have to carry a card, you know, like the four thing that you have to scan at apartment buildings right here. In China, it's like, just stand there and look at the camera and it, ding, <laughs> the face scans and the door opens. You just go in, I'm like, oh, okay, cool. Yeah, uh -huh. that's how it works. So it's scary, yes, I understand. Like, so basically you're open. You're so transparent. All your information basically is in the back end of those companies, right? And it depends on what they want to do with it. But in China, it's regulated kind of by the government. So the government probably knows everything. But then, <laughs> I mean, you know, like, it makes, it makes people who want to do, like, it makes crime harder for lower entry point uh, people who want to, you know, little theft and little things here and there, it, it's harder for them. But if you're a crime boss, you probably have ways to go around these things because you would have access and resources to people and things but for like low level, like low level criminals. It's just like impossible to do anything now. <laughs> Literally big brother, right? Like imagine how can you like, if you carry cash, people are going to look at you weird and they know there's something, you know, like, 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 you know, so, and then everywhere you go, like your face is just like your identity card. Everything scans your face, your, your bank, you know, like whatever it's like, yeah. <laughs> Well, I mean, think about that. Government knows everything. It's the same. Do you think like in North America, it's anything different? It just maybe not so invasive, but Google knows everything. <clears throat> Apple knows everything. And if you question about that, <laughs> you'd be naive, right? Just how many times have you seen ads pushed to you just after you've said about it? <laughs> like you had a chat with your friend in the room, right? about something and then when you go home and you turn on your computer and something an ad that's related to what you've just talked about just shows up yeah it has been happening for years now so like i'm not surprised at all it 
it's just whether they want to tell you they're doing it or not. In China, it's pretty like we're doing it. Who cares? <laughs> you know, that that's the one thing. You know, that's nice about the whole crazy digital and thing in China, which is you know it's going on because they're being very frank about it. And if you don't have your uh, this type of thing, you, you can't go anywhere. You can't open a bank account. You can't do this. So <laughs> it's like it's tied to your identity card. Yes, everybody knows it. <clears throat> Even Weibo these days, you can only register new Weibo account with a phone number. And the phone number has to be tied to your identity card. In China, it's very hard to get a burner phone. You have to do it in weird ways, basically. You have to find people who are selling it secretly and you're not going through. But it's hard. It's actually not easy. If you wanna if you if you wanna have a social media account, it has to be tied to a phone number, which the phone number is tied to your identity card. You cannot not have an identity card and activate a phone number in a normal way. Unless, for example, somebody had a card that's already in operation and then they just sell it to you. You don't have to relink it, but it's under their name. So, you know, unless it's something like that, or you like, you find actual crime lords who know the, these things and <laughs> give you burner phones. It's actually really hard to get a random burner phone that's not tied to any of your social identity. That's, that's like how crazy things have become. <laughs> you wouldn't imagine like, so I, I tried to ha help somebody to get a Weibo account. I don't know if you're watching. <clears throat> uh, and, and that person will tell you how much trouble we went through trying to set up a Weibo account for her because <laughs> I literally needed to go to a um, telephone service and request a new number opened under my name. That's the only way I can't, I can't get it. In. <laughs> I can't tie it to my own number because it's already tied to existing accounts. You can double do it. And wow, the amount of trouble <laughs> to just have a new phone number. Mm. Mm. So that's like the crazy things I've experienced when I'm back in China. Mm. And then we can talk a bit about Hong Dian. And then we talk a little bit about drama and let's try to end it at, at 12. Cause I know some people are like midnight where you are, it would be a, tomorrow it's working day. It's Monday, right? Wow, 10 years, shoot. Yeah, pickpocketing these days, if you go back to China, you don't need to worry about cash, nobody carries cash, but just make sure your phone doesn't get stolen. <laughs> okay, like make sure your phone, so just tie your phone to your body, like make sure like it's, it's like on your neck. <laughs> no way anybody can pick it. Just keep your phone with you and you're safe. Michelle, your phone is your life <laughs> in China. Without your phone, you're dead. A uh, foreign number, I mean, you can, but actually often foreign number, like when you try, it doesn't send you the text. Like supposedly it's like, we're sending you the message to confirm the number, but it never arrives. <laughs> it never happens. I've had that. So yeah, the friend of mine, who, like who did this with me, uh, she used her own phone number and it wouldn't work. Foreign numbers just doesn't get anything. So it still needs to be a Chinese number. Halloween, no plan. Like I don't celebrate Halloween just because I'm like, it's so much trouble, extra workload to dress up the house and whatever. It's just an excuse to spend more money. It's like, why do you have to dress must dress up things, you know, in Christmas too? It's like, yeah, but more money spent. <laughs> and, and, and then, and also honestly speaking, like, the whole ghost thing, not that I am superstitious, but that very yin energy, it's not something I think anybody should uh, voluntarily welcome to their living space. Unless like you're a burning fire furnace in your chart, you know, looking at Chinese, um, like Chinese sort of like, uh, what would fortune telling when we look at a person's element, you know, if you have water more, gold, metal more, wood more, fire more, all that. Unless your yang qi is like way too hot, right? You need a little bit cooling effect on you to actually cool it down and it will be balanced better. 
<laughs> Most people are humans, and you, like you, you are living, so you're on the young side of things. You're on not on the inside of things. During cold seasons, it's already things are like that, and he's like. I don't think like voluntarily inviting skeletons and blood and dead people like into your living space, even the symbolic meaning of it is like such a positive thing. But again, totally depends on if your body is actually, uh, you know, like if you actually like it and it's good for you, maybe for very rare humans. And then again, I just feel it's too much trouble. You know, you have to dress it up and put so much effort and then, you know, afterwards you have to take it down. Like, ah, oh, why? <laughs> I'm so lazy. I don't, I don't think it's like, to me, it's not religious thing. It's not like a devil or good or bad. I think it's just waste of money and time. <laughs> if you want me to like spend money and buy those like cobwebs and skeletons and hanging on the trees and whatever, like I'd rather spend that money on something else. Even just my, on my grocery. <laughs> Just too practical. I'm, I'm too practical a Chinese person. Um, so a little bit more about Hong Dian. Anybody if ever want to travel to Hong Dian, yeah, you can ask me questions now and I can see if I can help you. Um, I've already got emails from people, but that's like foreign people travel has a little bit complicated issue with hotel booking, all that. Because apparently in China, not every hotel has the license to host foreign people with foreign passports. There's actually restrictions, not that they don't want to, but they have to have the license to actually host foreign people. Otherwise they, they do it, it's illegal for them. They can do it. And I didn't even know that, but that's apparently true. <laughs> In very big cities like Shanghai, Beijing, it's much easier, but Hong Dian is actually a town. It's very small. It's under Dongyang city. So it could actually potentially be problematic if you want to travel to Hong Dian as a single foreigner. If you're traveling with a Chinese national, it's much easier. That person books the hotel for you. And when they check in, they check in, and then you check in under their name, you would also provide your passport, but then you don't have to, basically it's booked under that person, it's fine. The system would allow you to do that. But say if you're just on your own and you are a foreign passport holder, then you have to find hotels that actually have license to host foreign people, which uh, is not that easy in smaller places in China. So that could be a one problematic thing. Now, if you're going with a big group of traveling um, agency stuff, then that's a different thing. But I'm just saying on it as, as a individual person. Uh, so Foreigner friendly. Well, when I was there, I didn't see many foreigners, but it wasn't tourism season either. So it's hard to say. I don't think it's unfriendly. It's actually a very well developed tourism place in terms of facilities in the place, like, you know, how easy to travel, um, restrooms, you know, overall conditions of things are actually very well worked out. One of the better places actually now in, in China, because if you go to those parks that are selling tickets and usually like the ones apart from the Chunqiu Tangyuan, which I told you that it's really just for filming dramas. Nobody goes there to play, have fun because it's not designed for tourism. For the other ones like Qingming Shanghetu, Qing Wang Gong, they are all pretty worked out well. And you know, like it's clean and it's actually very, very friendly to tourists. Only the thing is like, if you book your tour, you have to make sure that you, if you're traveling on yourself, you can actually get into the hotel. Like it, it allows foreigners. Could be a little bit tricky, that part. And that's the only part that I think I didn't know that was actually a, a thing, um, but it is. Otherwise, when you are actually in the city, in the town, it's, it's easy. You just also, you just, cause in China it's all on the phone. You go on the, uh, the type of map. Uh, I use the, what's the name of it? English name, the Gaodu Di Tu, the Chinese, um, 
it's, it's one of the better map apps that's very easy to navigate and then you can literally just call a taxi right on it when it's tied to your alipay account and you just put in where you want to go and it finds where you are and then you can pick all the options such as public transportation or take a taxi or whatever you go to take a taxi and then it will give you estimated money how much it's going to cost and you just press call a taxi and usually within three seconds somebody responds and you'll immediately see the plate of the car the color of the car the name like the surname of the driver and how far they are from you which is like that bit and you just you know usually shows you two to three minutes and then when when the car actually comes up to you you go in and you tell the driver the last four digits of your phone number because they actually don't see it they just see like the empty like a passcode they have to type in the passcode that's right and that is the end number of your phone so the system recognizes it's the right driver pa uh, paired up with the right passenger and then you can start on your trip and it's constantly being monitored and once it gets to the place you get off you don't have to do anything it just automatically deducts money from your alipay and that's how taxi works now in China as well on the phone. You don't stand on the street and call a taxi. A taxi never comes that way. You just hold your phone, go on a taxi app, and um, it comes to you. And in Hengdian, it's actually small. It's a small, it's big in a way that you have to walk if you're in the place, but from place to place, I'd say usually between three kilometers to six kilometers. That's all the distances you need. If you live in Hengdian, anywhere in those like usual locations, and you want to go to a different part of the Hengdian today, for example, you go to the uh, Forbidden City, the fake Forbidden City from one place, usually it's within three to six kilometers most, and you just call a taxi. And it's really cheap. It's like about 10 RMB. 215 you get anywhere pretty much within Hengdian well, which is like what <laughs> two dollars <laughs> and that that's it and it's a and usually the, those are very uh, nice cars you know AC then clean and and it's all automatically taking money off your Alipay so you don't can foreigners have Alipay account? Um, yeah, that could be the problem. So that's why I'm saying the next step of Alipay is to have a temporary Alipay, which is like if you visit China for 10 days or 15 days, once you get to airport, they need to have something that allows people to have a temporary Alipay account. You put money in and it can, it can function for how many days? Because that will make it so much easier. If you're a foreigner and you want to have an Alipay account, you probably have to first have a bank account in China. Which means like you have to basically have a visa, work visa, something like that that allows you to open a bank account in the first place and then you tie it to your Alipay, which, you know, like I'm just traveling for four days and why am I doing that? That's a problem. Right now it's not yet um, solved, but I don't see China not getting it <laughs> figured out soon because it's previously because of COVID and things, you know, nobody comes to China for a while, so it's not necessary. But now, once it's reopened, it just makes logical sense for that to get done. It needs to get done. Otherwise, how, how, how are people going to move around now that everything in China is either on WeChat Pay or on Alipay? <laughs> it needs to get that figure out. Otherwise, people are just like, oh, how am I going to travel? Right? That's a big problem. But I'm pretty sure it will get figure it out soon when it's needed it will get done that's how it works in china it's when it's necessary it will get done yeah union pay yeah union pay is but it's definitely not as not as easy to use as alipay and wechat and that needs to be that needs to be sol uh, solved. <laughs> it really is a problem. Yeah, but if you are say if you're in Hengdian, right? If you want to travel around, I would highly recommend you just call a taxi on your phone. I never really use any public transportation because the buses are like half an hour <laughs> waiting, and you don't quite know how long it's gonna take. And it's a small town. The best way is to get taxi, and it's cheap. 
and you go from one place to another. And for the Hengdian um, drama shooting locations, I went to the most popular ones and most commonly used ones. So the ones that you see in my vlogs are the ones most of the tourists would go and visit. There are two new ones that are on a further outskirt of the town. So probably it's gonna take like 20 RMB to drive to, to, to taxi it there, which is not that far, but compared to other places. And there are the new ones that opened in recent years called the Summer and the Winter Palace of the um, of the Yuan Mingyuan. So the fake, the fake Yuan Mingyuan Garden, the Beijing Yuan Mingyuan Garden version that's rebuilt based on historical uh, plans that no longer exist, most of them right now in China, but they opened two new parks that also is used for filming palace dramas, Qing Dynasty palace dramas. One is replicating the Beijing um, very broken site of like burned down and left their stones of the Yuan Ming Yuan. The other is more of the traditional Chinese garden that did exist, but is no longer there, I think. Anyway, so those are the two new parks to the west of the Hengdian that I didn't go to because yeah, it's just like, I don't see like necessary. <laughs> it's, I don't have time. Also, you have to pay extra tickets money also I don't think any right now well-known dramas are significant dramas are shot there, so I didn't go. But in the future, it probably will be used for more Qing Dynasty setting dramas. And then the rest that are in my vlogs are all the popular ones, like the fake Shanghai in the 1930s, 40s, uh, the fake bond that I went and as my first vlog. Um, the Qingming Shanghe Tu with the restaurant thing, that's the Beisong one, that's in every freaking period drama <laughs> when you have a restaurant. Pick one that doesn't have that shot of that place. You can't even think of it. Every freaking drama has it. <laughs> I don't know, once it's built, it's probably the most used set of all Hengdian sets. Um, and Qing Wang Gong, uh, you've also seen that already. The Qing Palace that has that high-walled corridor thing that's in all the Zhang Guo uh, dramas. That, um, those are all in very main part of Hengdian. You wouldn't find it far out anywhere. And the Qingming Shanghe Tu, the restaurant place, and the Qing Palace are right next to each other. There are two parts that literally are right next to each other. So you usually visit them in one day. So in the morning, if you're in Qing Palace, in the afternoon, in you're in the uh, restaurant Qingming Shanghe Tu, or or reversed order. That's how usually people travel there. This is this is taken in the Qingming Shanghe Tu. You probably see the vlog already. You you you've seen these girls on 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 video, but yeah. <clears throat> there are Hanfu girls who are taking shots there. So this place and this place, these two places are right next to each other. Um, and you can do that in one day. And um, what else? Yeah. Uh, and I lived in the hotel that's in the Guangzhou, fake Guangzhou, Guangzhou Park, which is next to the Forbidden City, like the fake Forbidden City next door is the Guangzhou, Xiang Gang, Hong Kong Guangzhou Street. That some dramas are filmed there, but these days mostly it's used for tourism. Um, not that many dramas are being filmed there. Mm, maybe occasionally, just a couple of shots. Most of the shots are no longer done in that place. Um, so I lived in that part. Next door is the fake Forbidden City which is my next, no, next week's, next week's next, the week after next week's vlog. <laughs> and that would be the uh, fake Forbidden City, which I mean, from far looks impressively like the real thing. When you get close, you'll see the difference. But when you're far enough from it, it's, uh, yeah. For drama shooting purpose, for sure, it's enough. Let me find a photo on my... <laughs> so the fake Forbidden City. 
Looks like the real thing. <laughs> the palace is pretty impressive. And I actually walked into another crew shooting inside of there. And then, and then it would be the, uh, the Chunqiu Tangyuan. That's in the vlog <coughs> series one, two, three that are happening right now. And because that's a big place that a lot of dramas are shot. And that's the place Chunqiu Tang. So spring and autumn, Tang Dynasty Garden. That's the place where pretty much every period drama goes there to shoot something. Um, and it's a in operation working set that is not tourist friendly. There are like two bathrooms in the whole big, two restrooms in the whole big space. It's very hard to navigate. It has no signage. It's large. If you don't know where you're going, you're gonna walk like for two hours and not find anything. And, and actually I missed a part of that set because I, I think I went down one route and there's actually another route. If you pick the diver route, you will go to the waterfall. You will go to this pavilion on water, which is in Strange Tales of Tang Dynasty. If you remember the shot of the female lead character playing Gu Qing and Lu Lingfeng, Yang Xuwen's role walking on this, um, pavilion like walkway on the top of a lake if you remember that shot that was shot in the Chunqiu Tangyuan but it's in another part of the set that I didn't manage to find because it was 38 degrees and it was just me and I couldn't ask anyone and it's not like it doesn't not show where it is and it's mountains it's like <laughs> No human structures. I can't find it. I was in a mountain. So I don't know which road will lead to that, but I know it's there. I didn't find it. And I already spent the whole morning there and I was dying in the heat. So that's the one part that I didn't go. I think that part has a waterfall. It has that pavilion on water. And then it has a palace like thing that is being used in a million dramas such as Word of Honor at the beginning, first episode, when Zhou Zishu li leaves the uh, Qing Wang's place, that palace, right? That, 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 that's carpeted and it's snowing and he walks up to the steps. That palace is also in Chunqiu Tangyuan, but it's in the corner that I didn't find. <laughs> Unbelievably, it's that big, that area. I went to the North city where the water canal is, I went to the Tang city where like a lot of the, uh, under a big city gates scenes such as, uh, is it forever or forever or one and only like those two dramas, like Bai Lu jumps off the city gate that, that that's one. And then another one South city where most of the, uh, like a lot of dramas, like when you see a yellow like a yellow wall building in the streets with all those wood structures, like towers on the wall. And that's where um, most of the period drama like Lost You Forever has a lot of shots taken there. And I found those three and also the mountain, also all the cliffs that are in so many dramas. So I found like 80% of things that people go up there to film, but I didn't find the waterfall and the pavilion on water. I think I know where it is. Now I think back, I know there's one direction I didn't go down and probably it's over there, but honestly, realistically, it was too hard for me to go there anyway on the day. <laughs> my phone would have burned down. <laughs> my, like I would have like 10 times more tan and I don't know, I, like, like maybe that that's just not meant to be next time. And you wouldn't believe is the weird thing about Chunqiu Tangyuan is even though it's not tourist friendly, even though I was the only one of the three tourists I encountered, like I, I with another two people who are tourists, everybody else is working there on the day. Even with that and like hardly any convenience store, any facilities for tourists, like restroom, <laughs> it still costs you 160 RMB, the ticket band the sunburn ticket van, it still actually costs money to go in there. So when I was there, I think Sifang Guan was getting ready for a month shoot, which they just wrapped. I forgot to mention in a weekly video, they just wrapped this week. <laughs> so I was there a week too early. If I was there five days later, I probably wouldn't be able to get into <laughs> Chunqiu Tangyuan because it would be 
shooting 四方管，嗯，演的谭健次爪嘛 ，and 柳州记，呃、uh, ，which is 王楚然 and 张晚意 ，and 呃、uh, 杜华年、张凌赫 and 赵金麦 ，there's another one。Um, Strange Tales of Tang Dynasty second season wrapped on the day I went there, which is just funny. I walked onto their set, and they were dismantling it. I think I saw a van parked outside, and I just look at the permit. It says Strange Tales of Tang Dynasty, Tang Dynasty two. I'm like, oh okay. And then I look at the set, I'm like, oh, okay, that looks like your set because it has a totally different color scheme compared to everything else around it. I'm thinking this must be it. And, and then I walked in and then took a shot around that whole place. It's one of the cases that will get featured in the second season of Tang um, Strange Tales of Tang Dynasty, and it's also in Chunqiu Tang Yuan. And that night when I got back to hotel, I was like on Weibo and I was talking about it, and somebody just sent me a message and saying they just wrapped today the drama, but it was not in in Hengdian, so they were in desert out in the west shooting the desert part. So the day I went on their set in Hengdian, they were rapping like thousands of miles away, but it was on the same day. It was funny. So they finished all the shoot they need to do in Hengdian, and the last、uh, sket on their schedule, the last part was shot in desert. So Strange Tales Tang Dynasty was there. There was another drama. <sighs> What is it? Anyway, I saw a lot of vans in Chunqiu Tang Yuan and on. Like oh, uh, 念无双念无双 the、uh, Tang Yan and Liu Xueyi, Tang Yan and Liu Xueyi drama, and they they had this also in Chunqiu Tang Yuan. There's a part of a particular set that's in a lot of dramas. For example, also in Tang Strange Tales of Tang Dynasty, and anyway, they were furnishing it for the drama to come in later to shoot. So when I was there, and just working folks there building stuff. Um, drama hasn't come in yet, and I asked、uh, the guy at the gate. He was like, "What drama are you filming?" And his Mandarin is very off, so he said, "Nian." <coughs> he said "Nian Wu Shuang," but I heard it wrong. I heard it "Yan Wu Shuang," so I was like confused. So I was like, "Which drama has that title?" Until later, I realized, okay, he must be say saying, "Um, <laughs> Nian Wu Shuang." Um, so, uh, yeah. And that drama apparently has guest star Zheng Yecheng, which again, you know, I was too early to be there. So, but 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 honestly, if I was actually on the day when they're filming, I wouldn't be able to get in there. So, you know, I I I I just like go around with my gimbal and take a shot of the whole place. And that guy actually, I talked to at the gate of that set where where Nian Wu Shuang is gonna film. Is a really handsome young man, but because you know, like I, I was just talking to him. I was like trying to keep him off the camera in case people do really don't really want to get on camera. I, there's no shot of him in my video. You wouldn't be able to see his face. But I tell you, he's a very good-looking young guy. <laughs> What else? Yeah. So my Chunqiu Tang Yuan probably was the、uh, most interesting part of my Hengdian trip. And then that day. Afternoon, the whole morning I was in that place in the mountain. Afternoon, I went to the Mingqin Palace, the Forbidden City. It's huge. <laughs> you know, Forbidden City is huge. If you've walked in there, you know how far it is like to walk. And all the big palaces actually replicate it. So that whole hot day, thirty-eight degree, I walked from morning to, and you can see it. Actually, it really embarrassing me in my Mingqin Palace. Video would come out the week after next. You'll see all the sweat marks on my shirt, like the layers of salt that started to show. And <laughs> I had three layers of salt on my shirt at the end of that evening because because I was walking in all those places for a whole day, and it looked weird and horrendous. I don't know if you can see that. It's on my、uh, piglet shirt. <laughs> and look at the salt mark. That was the day, and you're gonna see it in my video. <laughs> Embarrassingly enough, you're gonna see it in my video because I was holding it, I was doing the gimbal, right? So you can see this, all the marks. That was like how crazy that day was. I was September the twentieth, and then twenty first is the day I left Hengdian. And to go to Hengdian in China, 
Usually, you would have to first travel to Yi Wu. Yi Wu, Y I W U. And it is the Xiao Shangping Shi Chang, the little commerce, little things、um, that are supplying the whole world. For example, during US president election, all the flags and all the caps, all the names, all the banners that you see in the States are all made in Yi Wu. So, just judging by how many they make for Democratic Party and the Republic Party, how many numbers of flags and hats they do, they can predict who gets, and they're right every time. Just look at numbers. Like this year, with the red and the blue are in this proportion, so most likely they are more accurate at predicting who's going to be the next president of the United States than any other United States news media outlet because every flag and banner and every those promotional things that people are waving on screen are all made in China with Yi Wu. That's how lovely our global economy is. So, <coughs> Yi Wu is the city that sells little things that supplies the whole world. And you have to first get to Yi Wu either by high speed rail or by plane. And the planes,、uh, the, the, the train station and the airport are very close to each other, like within one kilometer. So they literally are just like at the end of a road split into two one is airport, one is high speed rail. So, you from anywhere in China first buy a ticket to get to Yiwu. From Yiwu, easiest way is to get a taxi, which is not so expensive, about 100 RMB, which is what, 20 Canadian dollars and 15 US dollars is enough for it to actually. It's about 60 to 70 kilometers and about hour drive from Yiwu's airport to Hengdian's. Middle of the town, anywhere it wouldn't be that different. It's a small town, so take a taxi, and from Yi Wu Airport or High Speed Rail Station, you go to Hengdian and go to a hotel. That's how you get to Hengdian. And if you leave, you also leave from Yi Wu's High Speed Rail Station or airport. And I left from airport, and on the twenty first, my plane was like in the afternoon, four o'clock or something. I got there about three. Before three, like two thirty,、um, so that day from morning till about two o'clock, I was still in Hengdian, and I was like, I have more than half a day, and it would be wasted if I just walk around and do nothing. <laughs> so I kept my luggage at the hotel、um, front desk. You can keep it there until you come in and pick them up, and then I decided. To explore a couple of places, legend has it is like situated in weird places in Hengdian that are not tourist destination but are used for drama shooting. So I found a place that I will later show in one of my final sort of vlogs that shows up again in every freaking Chinese favorite dramas, and it's so random you wouldn't even believe where it is. And it's in every freaking Chinese drama, and it's in the most unbelievable place in Hengdian. It's not a park, not designed, not planned, not like、uh, you sell ticket and go in. It's literally on the back mountain of the、um, staff residence of a holiday resort hotel. <laughs> There's a holiday resort hotel. And there's a building they have called Number Six Building, that is very old-fashioned. Looks like it's built in 1990s, where supposedly the staff member of the hotel lives there. And behind it is a tiny hill, a bump that that has a lot of bamboo trees. And among the bamboo trees, there's this the tiny place that shows up in 90% of Chinese period dramas. You kind of already guessed what I'm talking about, and when you see it on video, you're not gonna believe it. The state it is in, and just how used it is, and how easy to cheat with that set, and how ridiculous it is. Literally, like when you're in that place, it looks convincing enough as a period drama set. You walk out like for ten steps, you turn around, <laughs> like this is ugly contemporary nineties. Like dorm dorm building built for this hotel resort, <laughs> and you see start to see like 
lighting poles and stuff. It's just, <laughs> it's just so ridiculous. You just take two more steps and you're in contemporary world. And you just take two more steps in, you're in a fake period time that looks convincing enough on camera. And therefore every drama goes there to shoot. And I think it's almost like rent free. Therefore it's on high demand and it's, keep, it's kept, like it's been used all, in all dramas, but it's absolutely ridiculous where it is. And it's absolutely dilapidated and terrible looking. Yet, yet in dramas, it's like, you can't even tell. Like it's pretty, it's in Word of Honor. It's in Ancient Detective. It's in Mysterious Lotus Casebook. It's in everything. <laughs> Can you guess what it is? When, when it shows up, you, you're gonna get really surprised. So I found it and I went there twice. Morning I went there, there was a drama shooting and they were literally fighting. <laughs> Can, you can see the extras sitting on the hill resting. You see the actors king, 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 doing that and then the smoke is coming out of that place. I'm like, okay, I'm not going in. They're shooting. So I was like, I'll come back. Maybe I'll do it. You know, I'm just not going to go in, but I'm just going to shoot outside. And then I went to a different place. And by noon, I had time to come back. It was still two hours. I had my lunch and then it was still like two hours left before I have to go to the airport. I'm like, Maybe go and try my luck again. So I went to that place again and the crew has just moved out. You can literally see them driving away. <laughs> and so I'm like, yay, the people are all gone. So finally that place is like, I can go in and I went in and I shot what it looks like inside. You never see that in any dramas because it's only been used for the outside view. Every drama you can think of in Chinese drama land when you see that set and you just don't see what's inside. And when I went in, I'm like, what the heck this place is? It's, uh, it will uh, shock you. So until that video shows up, it's funny. And then, so in between the two visits of that weird place, I went to Qing Shui Zhen. <laughs> I went to Lost You Forever's Qing Shui Zhen. Mm. Incredible. I managed to cram that place into my schedule. <clears throat> so I found Qing Shui Zhen. I searched on Xiao Hong Shu. And I know because I know uh, parts of the uh, Changxiang Si was shot, right? In a place where they built exclusively just for the drama, Qing Shui Zhen. I know it's in Heng Dian. And I was just searching where it is because it's not in any existing ticket selling set. It's a new one, new one they built. And it's in the ridiculous place in the mountain. It's next to a hot spring holiday resort that is right now not in function. So no tourists are going there. It's just like hardly anybody is there. And it's remote in the mountain, not so far, but once you go in there, you have to actually walk down from the mountain for quite a while before you can hit a main road so that you can call a taxi. Otherwise you wouldn't even be able to get a taxi. So you have to get a, you can call a taxi in for you to put, put you into that place. And then when you get out, you have to walk, 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 walk off the mountain. And, and there was a angry dog that's guarding the place that I had to walk around <laughs> and I finally found it. And it says like, a huge sign on the top is like not allowing any tourists um, to go in, but I was like, I'm already here. I don't care. So I walked to the door passing that gate and there was a tiny convenience store at the, at, at the side of that gate and another dog. And then this like middle-aged woman is just like sitting there. I'm like, can I go in? Cause on the outside it says it cannot, but I cannot see any working crew here. So, and she's like, yeah, I can go in. It does not matter. We're, we're just gatekeepers of this place, but really like, it, you know, just random tourists, who cares? So you can go in. So I walked up to Qing Shui Zhen's gate and it actually has, um, it has like a chain on, on the gate, but then it's wide enough so that you can walk through. So, and it's like, it's weird. And once I got in, I know that there's actually a, like a five people working in there and they are building things or like mending things. I, so I think maybe later there will be a drama that will shoot things here and they're just here to first just getting things ready for it. It does look very abandoned, but it also really is a completely newly built set that wasn't previously in Hengdian at all. 
it was completely built for Lost You Forever <laughs> and just for Qing Shui Zhen. And I heard what it was is because this hot spring resort is already in the mountain and behind it, there's an empty field that is flat enough and it has nothing going on and it's just mounting around. So I think the, the drama went location scouting and they found that place. So they caught, they talked to the Hengdian group, which is the corporation that's taking care of all the Hengdian drama related business and kind of like rented that place or like did a deal with the company, which is we spend money to build a set for you. Once we finish filming, we don't dismantle it. We just leave it there. And then, so it becomes yours. And in the future, if you want to rent it out to other dramas to do other ever things, it's yours. In return, you give me like a very cheap price for basically using that piece of land. I think that's a deal they did, the drama or the production company with Heng Dian. So the drama finished shooting, the set is left there. And I don't think so far many things have been sh shot there. It's kind of in the half dilapidated, but still manageable state. So in the future, other dramas can use it. And it's just been left there <laughs> at the end of <laughs> that hot spring resort, which is in the mountain. And I was officially the only person visiting there as a tourist on the day. Everyone else either is the shop owner on the gate or um, the, uh, the, the, the couple of people who are mending the set. I don't know for what drama to come future. So, I got to Qing Shui Zhen, mm -hmm. and I can uh, I can show you on camera like what are fake and what are real because a lot of the streets are only front, literally only see the front in the drama as well. Right behind it is nothing. <laughs> There's no no room. It has only one wall. It's a front street, and then there are a couple of rooms that actually are real rooms, and it's like a mix of uh, sets and stuff. So. And everything is taken, so all the uh, taken away, so all the decoration, all the fake moss, uh, all the soft things like flags and curtains, all the decorative things are all gone. It's just the bare bones of those um, of those buildings in the Qing Shui town. So I went there. <laughs> so I have a video about that place, which I haven't edited yet. Unbelievable! I have so much, so much stuff left. <laughs> I also went to a cultural heritage garden in Suzhou, which maybe I'll put in the vlog, maybe not, I don't know. I also went to the deepest subway station in China, which is in Chongqing, but it's like three minutes. So maybe I'll put it in the video, maybe I'll not, I, I, I don't know. I, I did so many weird things, filmed a lot of places. So if you're in Hengdian, um, there are actually quite a lot of places you can go and ridiculous things you can do. All those parks, like the Qingming Shanghe to Qingwang Gong, Forbidden City, all those places, they have shows like on a schedule every day, maybe twice, maybe like how many times, all types of weird things you go and see, which is a tradition of Chinese tourism that sometimes is frankly super embarrassing. But it's, I mean, maybe an experience. For example, in a fake Shanghai Bund place, they have the so-called Broadway dancing show, which pretty much is borderlining the things that you should be, shouldn't be seeing. Like, <laughs> I mean, it's not Magic Mike or, you know, like Crazy Horse, but it's, it's like, you know, like in that direction <laughs> of people dancing on, on stage. Um, as far as like regulations would allow in China, like pole dancing. <laughs> Just think about that. It's so weird, but it happens in, in Hengdian. And all foreigners, like they hire like foreign male and female dancers in the Shanghai Bound Park where they do that Bai Lao Hui Broadway show <laughs> where the stage turns into a pole dancing stage turns into like um like like all kinds of dancing show and then it turns into acrobatic performance and then the stage turns into a pool where people are actually doing in water like acrobatics it's <laughs> okay well, well Okay, cool. Like, um, I guess it's included in your ticket price. So if you don't see it, it's your loss. But really, it's weird when you watch it. Every park has a couple of shows like that. Some of them are more understandable. Like the, uh, like I think I put on camera of the Qing Palace where they're fighting like the hero movie. 
right? You have the wire work pulling right there. And others like in Mingqing, uh, Qingming Shanghe Tu, where they have the Bian Liang Yimong, which is talking about the Qingming Shanghe Tu, the painting. That show looks pretty nice. A couple of them are okay. And then there are a couple that are absolutely weird. Like there is actually a theme park, which is totally a theme park for all types of crazy things you do in a theme park. And they have a show that's literally pouring water. Like it's called Bao Yu Shan Hong. And it's called um, a flooding of, of a, a mountain. And it's a fake mountain and you sit and watch the mountain and it fakes a kind of like primitive tribe that prays to the heaven for it to rain and it starts to rain and they pour water from the top of the mountain with a mechanics that's insane. So much water comes down and it's like literally almost like flying into your face. And that whole show is about that whole flood. Yeah, there's a flood show, literally just for you to look at how much water can get dumped in one second and in, in Hengdian. So there are crazy things in Hengdian <laughs> that, that, that may be completely unexpected. But to me, the most interesting things are obviously drama sets, but not saying outside of that, there aren't other weird things to look at <laughs> if you ever travel there. Um, yeah, these are the things you should be expecting. So, that's Hengdian. Hmm. And, well, 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 well. <laughs> so, I had from the vlogs, I need one from Taobao. Okay. I think actually on Amazon, you should be able to find them too. Because basically on Amazon, they got this stuff from China. It's the same supplier. It's just like different people selling them. On Amazon, you can find this type of hat, at least like Canadian Amazon, I've seen it. But if you're on Taobao, probably cheaper. But Canadian Amazon definitely has it. I've seen it. I just never, I didn't, I didn't get it from Canadian Amazon, but I've seen it almost exactly the same thing. Yeah, well, I I have to have it. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to do my trip in Hongdian. It was too much. I couldn't really be holding an umbrella. That wouldn't be able to, I wouldn't be able to do other things. <laughs> but, but then, if I don't have that, I wouldn't be able to see things. It was so hot. And then... <clears throat> <sighs> Rabbit hole is untamed. Untamed is like too long ago, right? And yeah, a lot of that is shot in Hengdian. And this time I've seen so many places I'm like that probably got that shot, that shot in, in Hengdian. Hengdian, Hengdian, like so, so many untamed shots. Now I look back on untamed. If you look at the uh, drama itself, I just, I have to say, okay, they have the weirdest color grading in the world because the actual sets and things look so different. And they just graded it so blue and cold and I think they have a lot of overexposed shot just because when they are shooting in raw, they, they already made messed up with the ISO setting and, and, and all the settings that things are so blown out that they try their best to put it back and therefore they have to mask, it with, mask that with filters and different color gradings. There are a couple of shots that look so bad, so bad in the Untamed that totally was like technical failure. and. And, and, and then you, you look at the color grading of the drama, right? It's, it's again, um, it's just very specific to Chinese drama land where certain types of color grading is almost sought after or people think it's like, you know, it, it makes sense to do that. But in any film school in the world, if you go and study cinematography and if you color grade your stuff like that, your teacher is going to kick you in the ass that level of bad lighting and color grading. Yeah, it's like something that confuses professional people who, who got properly trained, right? It's like, why do you do it that way? Like, it looks so bad. But somehow, I, I think a lot of that is to do with the idol culture. Also, just overall, these days, everybody can, can, can you know, like beautify right, with the filters, filters that, that they forgot what real people look like. Or, or they, they just all want to look like cartoon and animation 
people who have no shadows on their faces. It's no, no structure. It's all just a flat, white lit face with color that makes them, in their opinion, look young, youthful, pale. I don't know. <laughs> and and then you compare it to what people look like right in that environment with the natural sunlighting, and and you're just like, wow, that just like. <laughs> I know I went there on a summer day and I didn't do, I didn't pretty much didn't do much filter and color grading of my vlogs. It's pretty much just straight out of iPhone. So what iPhone decides it to look like, unless it's too weird, I change it a little bit sometimes because iPhone jumps white balance, but it, within one shot, it will, it will shift and it looks very ugly. Apart from that, I didn't do much and really in that real space and in summer sunlight, cause they filmed on time in summer. You can tell uh, it's super hot. Um, and, 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 the, and the end product looks like it's been dipped in Arctic Ocean. <laughs> and, and just like how blue and cold it is. I'm like, wow. Wow. It's shocking. It's like how, how, how um, yeah. Anyway, just a couple of fun things. <sighs> Anything else we want to talk about? Or right now there are so many dramas ongoing that I feel I am completely. Oh, and I'm at the end of the live stream. I forgot to do this, so I have to do this. If you've, you, if you've been here for two hours, sorry, but let's do this first. I'm gonna scroll through the chat and then randomly stop somewhere, and then whoever that person is, I'll tell you and email me. Let me know your mailing address so I can ship this to you. Okay. So let's go, let's go, let's go. I mean, I can go to the top and then go down randomly, randomly somewhere. Not looking roughly in that area. <clears throat> so I'm stopping on someone called Redley Eldorado. Eldorado, is that? R E D L L I E E L D O R A D O. If you're still here, <clears throat> lipstick. Oh, you talked about my lipstick. I stopped on your comment on the lipstick. So, if you are in somewhere that you can receive mail from Canada, email me your yeah address, mailing address. And as for my lipstick, I think it's just one of those <laughs> Sephora ones. <laughs> It's not any brand, it's just a Sephora one, like the $17, something like that. Sephora one, it has a silver, it's silver, it's Sephora, it's, yeah. <laughs> and I need to go and check the number, I can't even remember what it is. So, if you're still here, if you're not here, well, <laughs> let's see if, if you respond. <laughs> Because if you're not here, then it's going to be a little bit tricky for me to, uh, to get to you again. I have no idea because uh, how to contact you. <sighs> oh, and also when I was, um, when I was in Hengdian, I saw a lot of Xu Kai's posters everywhere. Because I think he's the official spokesperson for Hengdian. That's why he's like the son of Hengdian, Dongyang of Hengdian. Everywhere you go, you see huge Xu Kai. In in Hengdian, it's like his face is plastered in Hengdian. <sighs> so are you still here? <laughs> uh, the giveaway winning person, if you are, just type a word out there. If not, then we probably have to find another person just because, you know, if you're not here, you wouldn't know, and then you wouldn't email me, and then that wouldn't happen. <laughs> if that's making any sense. Um, yeah, Hongdian has a spokesperson. Alice and Gucci. Yeah. Are you here? If not here, I'll have to find another person. So please let me know if you're here. <clears throat> El Dorado, who talked about my lipstick color. <clears throat> the, 
They are still here, All right? Hopefully show soon. Yeah, I'll give it a couple more minutes. I mean, yeah, it's already close to 12, but who cares? I usually do two hours and a half. <laughs> so I'll wait for a bit more. If that person doesn't show up, let's just do it closer to current chat. So not going back too much in case people are already gone. And then totally depends on random <laughs> chance of universe. Romance on the farm, I'm, I'm trying to catch it up. I'm only at episode five. <laughs> I'm so slow. Time, you know. Um, so far, it, I think it's a xia fan ju. It's a very typical xia fan ju. Eat while you watch. You don't have to like think too much about it, and then it doesn't create a lot of mental stress when you watch it, and you forget about it quite easily. But you can easily pick it up too, and it's like kind of moment to a moment fun watch. That's what I feel that drama is like mostly. So, xia fan wa is okay, uh, but I mean masterpiece probably not. And you can, can clearly tell it's shot in studio. That lighting is like trying to fake natural light, but it quite not not quite doing it so that you can still tell it's studio lighting. Um, in a lot of, particularly when they're happening around the house of the grandfather, it's all just like um, shot on a set. Um, but there are shots that's actually in real fields. Probably the, the, the actors got a lot of mosquito bites or whatever like <laughs> while they were shooting because it looks like they're always in the wild or in the field or in the forests or in natural landscape. <clears throat> I have all platforms. Every platform. <laughs> the imaginable China has. I just VPN my way back to China. Mm -hmm. My journey to you, definitely not a second season. I don't know. <clears throat> For dramas to drumbeat, <laughs> it only works if you are really, really, truly talented and you really have a lot of stuff that other people don't have or you are just like so good at what you do. And you can be obnoxious and show off. But you show off in such a sassy way that people just like enjoying it. Otherwise, when you try to do that, it just makes you look stupid. <laughs> so dramas like um, My Journey to You has that. It's like, they're trying to appear to be so much more high-end than it really is, and it got weird. <clears throat> All years with Hu Ge and Wu Lei. Hu Ge and Wu Lei were working together, really? What, what is that? Film? Television? Theater? Uh, cause somebody asked me about that. Like, uh, no, we, no. <clears throat> Movie. Okay. Yeah, Strange Tongue, I'm looking forward to that too. <clears throat> I love the style of my journey to you. It's quite fully, you know, at the beginning, I think. But as later, the thing is, when it first shows up, it's okay. As it continues for the whole thing, you realize they really don't have content behind it. They, have, they don't have solid script and story and characters behind it. And you start to feel the facade is just a dress up so that it appears to be sort of falling in, like for people to to get fooled, basically. It's like a camouflaging the weak core, right? The outside looks, has its a lot of good. If you actually have a strong story and then you have that style on the top, then the style is like, I understand why, like, like it, it gets backed up. Whereas the drama, like the, the shell is just so crumbling. When you realize the core does not really have anything going on and you just have like the, everybody's just pretending to be so, so, much more than they are, and then they're actually all morons. Honestly, <laughs> when you think about it, my journey to you, it's like everybody pretends to be like they're super clever, but then they're like, really? And then when you think about it, it does not work out, and it's actually a, a bunch of stupid people. And just, yeah, and yeah, that's my opinion, okay? <laughs> but I, I just basically lost interest in the whole dress up thing. <clears throat> Asian detective, I don't know, because the writer I've been following is Weibo and he hasn't said anything even till today about whether he can have a second season. Maybe become uber rich and then found him. 
and then fund him. <laughs> like, like fund him, like give him money. Maybe that's the only way to get it work. Mysterious Lotus Casebook. I would need to actually watch it first. I know it's one of the more popular ones. Lost You Ever Lotus Casebook are the two period dramas during this summer that are in any way you can be considered getting a little bit of popularity in Dramaland. Although it does not compare to previous couple of years. I know that for sure. Um, I watched <clears throat> Lotus to about 11 or 12, around the time when Chen Duolin officially shows up. I think. And then I stopped and I didn't go back and I had other things and just never had time to go back. So by that point, I wasn't super in, like I was okay with it. Um, when the three guys got together, basically living under the same roof, it started to get a little bit interesting. But right around there, I think I stopped and I didn't go back. And I did hear from people telling me that afterwards it got better, like later it got better, but I wasn't, um, I just happened to stop at a place where I haven't really gotten into it. So I, I haven't, and I know it's popular and for all kinds of you know reasons, you should go back and watch it just because, you know, if I make a video on it, I'm gonna get more clicks on it. I know, but I just need to find the time to do it. And I am so, Xi now with my channel. It's like I can see what can get me more traffic and what can get me more But I'm like, yeah, but I yeah, it's like only if I really want to do it. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm like, I don't care. I am so not a Diligent youtuber in in terms of like actually working for the algorithm. I'm like, yeah, whatever so if you know if if it works out the time wise I will try my best, but I do have couple of more things I need to take care of. And then, yeah, um, personally, I don't think I can do drama review forever, you know, <laughs> like maybe still a couple of years, yes, but eventually I would have to do other things also. Like, so, so, so I have to do other things in life, <laughs> basically. It depends on if I have time to look at it. By the time I stopped watching Lotus Casebook, it wasn't yet that exciting for me. Later, if it got better, maybe I'll find time to try to try to catch it, right? I, I know it ended and I know when it was um, on air, it's popular and they had a concert at the end and it kind of fared pretty well compared to what Lost You Forever did that just angered everybody who loved the drama. Although I don't watch all the dramas, I follow all the melons, hey? I know like when they did the uh, concert for Lost You Ever, so many people were pissed about the fact that um, Zhang Wan, he did a poetry reciting instead of singing, which is just so funny. And just think about it, how embarrassing that could be. Um, I don't even want to click open the video to see that. It, it, it's just going to be cringy. Uh, just gonna be so cringy. So in comparison, Lotus Casebook probably is a better experience overall. I know. I'll try my best. I see if I can get to it. Um, there are definitely a lot of dramas that kind of fall through this summer just because I couldn't get to it. <clears throat> Let's see what else is is. Uh... Yeah. Lotus book. I mean, I have like, I have a list of dramas I, I haven't checked out. You wouldn't believe. <clears throat> Mango, I have a friend. I know I've heard like it's a really interesting comedy. I've watched about four episodes and I stopped there. I didn't continue. Um, it's a really weird vibe comedy. It doesn't look like it comes from Chinese drama. It has that weird sense of humor and I appreciate a bit, but not yet being fully so engaging to me, but it's on Mango and it's the wuxia comedy where people just talk about random things and it starts to get like, 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 like a live stream, like a chat and, and things got really weird, but it's not bad. Um, I watched four episodes. Um, Xi Shu Yu Meng, I haven't finished. I'm around episode 27, eight or some, uh, something like that. While I enjoy um, Nini and Bayu's performance, I think they overall perform on a higher level than the average level of acting of most of the Chinese drama land, contemporary, whatever romantic drama acting. 
The story itself is not that well written. The structure, it's not so like adventure story. I would not write it that way. It structure wise failed at at script level in many things. Although the two leads are uh, by no means bad, and even the supporting roles are okay. It's just <coughs> I feel it's a missed opportunity for Xu Chu Yuman, West out of Yuman, Nan Feng Zhi Wo Yi. Uh, the Zhang Yuxi and Cheng Yi drama. I watched like the beginning of it. I, I was just so weirded out by the super heavy trope look of everything. And I don't know if later it got better, but wow, the first episode, I was like, am I looking at drama like from two decades ago? Is this time travel? Because it's so tropey that I, I shuddered at the over tropiness of the setup at the beginning. Okay, I don't know later. Um, maybe maybe it, it got better. I have no idea. I, I just like got I was like eh, Maybe leave it leave it until it, ha it has to happen. Uh, just the beginning just like was really wow two decades ago um, The Cheng Yi and Zhang Yuxi one um, 凡程之下, I've finished watching I may make a video on it Yeah, that's a drama. It's it's hard for me to rate. Um, yeah, hmm The ripe tank I have high hopes for it Certain things it did really well, and certain things I am like, go back to script writing school. Holy shit, what are you doing? And <laughs> anyway, uh, I finished watching the drama and I have a very mixed feeling about Ripe Town. Although I absolutely adore Ning Li, his acting. Like, who is the most sexy middle aged man that, the, like, who is most unexpectedly sexy middle-aged male actor who doesn't appear to be super handsome or has like you know the body that's like the, in the traditional sense being a sexy guy but Ningli is so sexy in his own way and he's so captivating on, on camera it was just me okay I was watching Fan Cheng Zhixia and I was like that he's the reason that I went through the whole 12 episodes thing if it wasn't him I wouldn't have been able to like Go through it. Um, <clears throat> yeah, South Wind knows my mood. Okay, that's the title. Yes. Moving on to yeah, Lotus Casebook. I'll try my best. Bionic. I haven't checked it, but I doubt Song Weilong's performance is gonna impress me in any way. I just honestly, I don't think he should be in acting. <laughs> Some people are not just like talented in certain things that they should just give up because it's not meant for them. He should be a model. He's so girl looking in the photo and he should stay there. Um, <clears throat> so honestly, I don't have hope for his acting. I don't think Wen Qi can save that just because she's there. But um, I, I also look at the synopsis. It's pretty interesting synopsis and, and setup, but I, I, I'm highly doubtful about how well it gets actually worked out as a script. I've heard opinions about it. I'll see if I have time to actually watch it. But it's a sci-fi idea, right? So at least it's like not so just like boring as any other tropey romantic dramas. Um 我有暗香来, on Yu Ku with Zhou Ye, Wang Xingyue. I've heard so many things about it and I haven't had time to check it out yet. Depends on if I can. Again, a drama that gets contested quite a lot and people overall, I think I get the impression that it is a drama that um, you may find it really problematic, but somehow you still have the <laughs> willingness to keep going and see what happens. That's what I hear most people have this reaction, which is like, I can tell this is like not really well done here and there and there and there, but still I'm curious about what happens next. I've heard about that. Will and Xiang Lai, the scent of time. Um, haven't had time to check it out yet. Um, again, it's a drama that I don't have any confidence in the main lead's acting <laughs> department, but maybe the story itself is interesting enough. And then pretty people, you know, you have enough pretty people in it. As an idol pair drama, Tian Gong Ji, I am watching it. Like I said, I think it's a Xia Fan Ju so far. Um, don't think it's gonna have like high ups and downs, but it's gonna be like a happy little sort of hopping bunny. <laughs> a type of drama. Just hop its way across its time. Um Yi Feng Shui Rising with the Wind is coming tomorrow. So we shall see. Tomorrow we're gonna see, you know, whether it's watchable. 
And then also led by Zhong Chuxi is the on-air one, furthest distance with Zhang Yunlong, although <laughs> it's a uh, after they break up airing drama filmed when they were still together. It's a little bit awkward for both of them. And on the day when it started airing, it's already on Chinese social media <laughs> trending hashtags about, about how uh, how awkward they are at live stream trying to promote the drama when they are no longer together. Um, I watched about one episode of The Furthest Distance led by Zhang Yunlong and Zhong Chuxi and too much skin smoothing, <laughs> a very tropey setup of the male lead and female lead. Um, pretty unrealistic and when, when you think about it set in China. And just in episode one, in all the flashbacks of the male lead's previous relationship with his dead girlfriend, who's played by Chen Yao, I guess guest starring, I wanna kick the director in his or her face really for like the direction. Because I mean, for actresses, right? I'm pretty sure if you tell them to act in a certain way at their level, they can adjust it. But wow, her acting in the flashback, it's so like a kid who has no idea about how to do acting, got told by a teacher, go on the stage and just act like this. You know, like a North Korean kid reciting poetry about how they love their leader, like that vibe. <laughs> it's the same way that Chen Yao played that role. I'm like, like she doesn't have to, like I know she can act pretty normally, Wow, that that <laughs> that acting just like just put me off so much that I couldn't continue watching. But that was just the episode one or two, I think, of the uh, furthest distance. Uh, if Rising with the Wind is more watchable, I probably wouldn't keep watching this like Zui Yao Yuan's Julie anymore. It's it's shockingly scary. And then I finished watching The Heart. I'll put a video out very soon. I've been watching it while I was traveling in like the last leg of my traveling in China before I came back because it aired on the 7th. So I was watching that drama, pretty happy with it. What else? Um, I think I've gone through like a list of most of the dramas that are ongoing right now. <laughs> and a lot of things ongoing, but um, couldn't pick one that is engrossing enough. Hmm. And the one that I really like when Xing has already finished airing, it's a medical drama. The type of things like when it's finished, it's finished. It, 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 it's like very hard for you to rewatch it multiple times. You can, but then, you know, it's good. But yeah, what else? <laughs> Maybe just give it another 10, minutes and then okay so let's do it again because that person didn't show up i'll do it around um the later comments so that um, we can be sure that people are here okay let's just do this do this do this randomly randomly pick okay so i ended up on multi stand 95 hopefully you're in somewhere you're here and then <laughs> then you are you're in somewhere that can get this. And hopefully you like Untamed, otherwise that would be a, a bit awkward. Like you ship other couples and then, you know, somehow this ended up. And yeah, I have to give them as a, give out them as a couple, right? It would be weird if they're separated. So, Multistand95, hopefully you're here. Um, let me know, email me your address that you can get mailed. Let me know if you're still here. I think you're still here because you just typed out something like like what? <laughs> like 15 lines before this should be happening. <clears throat> so it's a meadow bookmark of uh, Wei Wuxian. And La uh, Wanji under Wei Wuxian is a carrot. <laughs> and it says Wi Fi Ji Shi, which is pretty cute because it's Wi Fi. Uh, multi stem person, show up and just type yes, you got it. <laughs> I hope you're still here. If you're not here, that would be weird. Let me know you're here. Because if you're not here, I have to pick another person. I'll just like keep getting weirder and weirder. And then for Lan Wangji, uh, it says Lan Ya Ju Shi. 
So Bluetooth, Jishi, and Wi-Fi Jishi. And Wi-Fi Jishi has a carrot. And Bluetooth Jishi has a bunny. So it's a pretty cute design. It kind of says everything about these the iconic things. She yeah, she was here a second ago. I know. Hi, calling 95. <clears throat> Mo just 95, are you still here? You're just gonna make it even harder <laughs> for today's giveaway. Cause it, cause if if it fails again, that would be like so awkward. Like like like, like the worst the Long Chang, right? In uh, in in performance history. Are you here? Yo, hi. Maybe they're off to um. I don't know. Okay, I'll give it like a little bit more time, and if not, then I'll pick another one. <laughs> Keep getting weirder. <clears throat> oh. Hey. So you're here. Your Netflix account is named Wei Wuxian. So this person who has that account named Wei Wuxian. You got the use. Are, are, you sh are you sure you've heard me? <laughs> like you've got this, just let me know. And then email me, okay? Just say that, that you know. Otherwise, it would be weird. <laughs> oh, mm, mm, mm. Yes, it's you. <laughs> Multistand 95, it's you. So you have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. <laughs> just let you see it in more detail. Oh, okay. Okay, you know, oh, cool. Well, email me. <laughs> I'm just saying, email me your um, your mailing address. <clears throat> Hope you're in some places where uh, Canada Post can reach, right? <laughs> Thank you. Antarctica, that would be a little bit problematic. Um, yeah, and in the future, you know, if I could be in China, and then live streaming. The live streaming thing in China is VPN is so unstable. The speed is up and down and up and down and up and down. I feel like if I open the live stream, it's just gonna die anytime and it's not gonna work. So it would be ideal if like I could be in Hengdian <laughs> doing a live stream. It's like, which one do you want? I'm just gonna get it from the shop right here. <laughs> that would be so cool, isn't it? The 5G speed in China is, is good enough, but the VPN is just so unstable all the time. Okay, so right now you've got our winner. Email me, email me your mail address and I'll send Lan Wanxi and Wei Wuxian to you. Yes. <laughs> oh, good, good. As long as it, it can get there, it's fine. It probably will take a while because it's not gonna be, well, it depends, depends on. I think I'll be go on air if I am in a small envelope as a letter. Let's hope, let's hope. I have to dress it up because these days, um, <laughs> in Canada Post is just so weird about things. It does not allow you to ship things that are not letter in a letter mail. But then if you dress it up, maybe you can. Yeah. Uh, okay, what else? <clears throat> yeah, I already uh, have the, uh, I know. So, so just email me. Um, okay, since we're already at 12 18, let's just make it 12 30 and cut it there. <laughs> Still two hours and a half. Um, what else? In Dramaland, is there any other? Oh, the melon is still, <laughs> the melon of Chen Muji is still fermenting. And I think it's pretty much done now, but it's just so, so entertainment business, you know? It's like a classic case of, um, everybody is a real person and they all have passed and sometimes just like comes back to bite you in the ass in, in all kinds of ways. Um, 
And honestly speaking, in the entertainment land, particularly the type of things that that is between you know people like like the Chen Mu Chi current situation with his previous roommate, it's so common. But it's just like on the surface, people don't talk about it, right? If you are already in the entertainment business, it's nothing weird at all. Like if your orientation is slightly, you know, this and that, and maybe both and whatever, like it's so many people are. It, it's more important about like whatever it is, like if you're a decent person overall, you know, like whether you like this and that, that does not matter. But if you're a decent enough person, I think that's much more important, um, whatever that is. But, but right now the whole thing just, <laughs> I think people are just eating melons. They're just having fun with the the guys uh, live streaming and they just want to see what's going on. And this guy, I mean, he successfully doubled um, his like following on Douyin. Um, like more than, I think it's double Chen Mu Chi's following. Chen Mu Chi is like five, five, 500K follower on Douyin. He's got a million. <laughs> he now has a million followers and it's just like so... Holy shit, this whole episode is just so, everybody's just melon eating, really. And, and the type of thing he says about, I mean, I wouldn't, I'm not surprised at all. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I will. It's not making any splash for me, um, because ah, entertainment business. Far worse and weirder things happen. This is just nothing. This is nothing compared to like, like serious, real, crazy stuff this is like what <laughs> barely anything <laughs> hmm it's gonna be tough for all of them and in terms of like navigating this world because right now everything is so easily um, like exposed under the whole existence of social media, internet. Honestly speaking, the previous generations of famous people in the world, whether it's in, you know, like in China or other places, entertainment business, everybody has like a shit ton of skeletons. And it only is because back then there's no way you don't have social media. You don't, you don't have like Instagram. You can't send photos out and you can't immediately get a million unrelated people on this planet. Just see the same thing at the same time. Therefore, a lot of those old melons and skeletons never get publicized and you don't know. Had it always been that we have internet, all of those like previous sort of like right now, uncle and aunt, like aunt or even like grandfather age, big stars. Right, they, they, so many of them have all done unbelievably over the top problematic things in their past. It's just like you don't have record on them and you never found out and now they're old. So they're not doing that anymore. So you, you know, <laughs> it's just like for these, this, this day and age for the new coming people, like in the business, it, they have to be super uber careful and then it's just the fact that it's just too easy to, to, to find anything these days. Um, and honestly, like really, really spotless, good people, good people with quotation mark. I <laughs> just like, how many are there out there? And, and then like, what are the chances they end up in entertainment business and also famous, you know, cause if you're not famous enough, nobody about your melon, who cares? If it wasn't for that function got so popular during the summer, nobody would give to Chen Mu Chi. And I mean, Starry Love was a little bit, mm -hmm, but barely there, barely there, right? Because the drama didn't completely take flight. And what else does he have? No, just that pretty much. And then creation of gods. To me, I'm really, like I said, I only care about like nobody has a significant legal problem. Like the type of red tape you and cancellation you forever in drama and thing happen before the films get released. And also the whole right now, because of the whole cancellation culture thing is 
it's not done by any regulation. It's not really any clear rules saying if you done this, done that, then you get erased. But a lot of people did get erased in the last couple of years. And the thing with that is, yes, you can get erased, but can we just have a clear written rule about for doing this and that, you're gonna get erased. For doing this and that, you're gonna get banned for this amount of time. For doing this and that, you're gonna get this punishment. Can we just have something that that we can go off on? Because this is like just who judges, right? How terrible or how, how small and how big the punishment should be, how permanent and impermanent it should be, what level of it should be, and then can we just have something like we can go off on? Then for example, for example, if I am a producer or if I am an investor in the project, it's my hard earned money. I get it made, I want it back. I want 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 make profit. And you have this volatile, unknown, dark zone of I don't know which person I hired. I can't I don't have I'm not FBI. I cannot just like scan everybody's from the moment they were born to now on my crew who's done what and maybe potentially problematic so I hire or don't hire them. So like it's unfair to the business people who are just like doing a business. You know, I, I do it for your rule. I put money in, I want my profit back. Like I'm not doing anything illegal. I'm just doing normal businesses. Who is going to be there to protect my? And then you say like, you can't just put that on insurance company. You know, <laughs> like that would be like, ensure that you don't have a weird actor who gets canceled out insurance policy. Which company would want to do that? And and you can write it in your contract, say if you F up and it's because of you that my stuff doesn't get aired and I don't get the money back, you pay me back. But can they really? Even for really big stars, right? For production, if it's big enough, it's like what? 10 million, 20 million, small number. That's already like small, but like for, for big things, it's 100 million, 200 million. Who individually can pay that off? <laughs> so what, what does it? Like for the people who honestly are just doing it as a business and who hasn't done anything wrong, how can they be basically responsible for vetting every freaking person on their crew? For a big drama, there's like hundreds and thousands of people. Like how are, if I am in the business and I want to make a drama, how am I going to navigate this? There's no rule about that. And also it's weird that if you have somebody who has some problem and they get erased and I mean, I'm, I think it makes sense to ban somebody so that from now on, they cannot be in any new things, but their past stuff they've already done <laughs> got erased as well. That's just like, well, there are many other people involved in those productions too. Like they haven't done anything wrong. Um, and why couldn't they just do a system where it's, it's basically easy. Like at the beginning of every episode, you can just, uh, just have something you cannot skip over. It has to play those five or 10 seconds. This actor in this drama, because they did this, now they're canceled in China. Be that, let that be a warning. Just put that freaking compulsory at the beginning of every episode. And maybe at the end of every episode, you can't skip over. <laughs> and still allow the thing to be on there. Like, yes, from now on, they can be making new things. I mean, okay. But like they're like 20 year old, like 20 years ago stuff. You just take it down, I'm like why? <laughs> like, uh? um, so a lot of that is dysregulated. There's no rule and it's just a wild west. And that can easily be manipulated by people. They can use it to attack other people. Like for example, I just don't want you to have a good business. I have like private beef with you. So I find a project that you're doing right now and I just like go and just like magnifying glass. Everybody on your crew, oh, I found that person has said something politically wrong and I put that person out and then, like I make sure that person is somebody you cannot delete from your project. So I fuck up your whole project. Like you can do that. So how, how do you like stop that from happening? It's just from now on, it's just all gonna be like that. That needs to get sorted out. Cause in recent years, too many things like that happened and it got a bit weird and ridiculous. <laughs> you know, like Song Zhuar, tax problem comes out right after Zhe Yao has finished shooting. So now what? For the company that, that has, has done this and paid money to, to get this drama made. They have to now invest extra 10 million to freaking get another actress to face swap her out. What if in the process of making another guy in, or another person in this drama Fs up again? And now, now what do you do? Same situation with the um, Fan Bingbing drama. That first had her, as a, first had um, Gao Yunxiang, right? That guy who had a sexual assault case in Australia 
had a problem. So that guy gets deleted and they refilm it with Li Chen. And then Fan Bingbing herself got into trouble. So the drama is like, what, double whammy shit load of trouble. <laughs> and, and I'm just like, this is... Like, it's, it just does not make a very functional sense for the system to work like that. I don't think it's a problem that if somebody has this and they need to get a level of punishment, and it's a high profit job in China, so therefore you have a high, let's say, risk and high responsibility. Okay, that's fine. But then like in terms of like making it clear, what are the things you can do? What are the things that's gonna do this, 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 and if this happens, what happens? Like, can we just have a clear <laughs> rule? Because right now it's so messy and every drama that has a person that kind of like flops and then you're like, oh shit, the drama, the whole thing tanks. Is that necessary? Does that like in any way facilitate a healthy industry? And I don't think it's been done in other places in the same way, right? And also like, I think, I think it just needs basically a clear written out rule so that everybody knows what they're doing and they can go off on it. Right now it's like a guessing work and, and try out my blind luck and hope like people are not hiding in the dark and trying to kill me. Like, go. <sighs> what the heck? Oh, actors, and you, I don't ever swear on anyone. <laughs> Female, male, famous, not famous, young, old. You know, not just actors, directors, producers in this industry. You know how difficult it is to find a really decent person in entertainment business. I'm not just saying like the on the top, like the visible big names. I'm saying like even including people who never show up, their face on screen, they're in the credits, they are like the second assistant director, they are the prop uh, master of this. Like so many different people work on set. If they have a little bit power in their hand in terms of in the business, wow. The level of crazy things that, have, that happens in this, in this business and I've seen, you know, you know how difficult basically it is to have a decent person. <laughs> so I don't, you know, like I don't trust any like I, I wouldn't have a blind good opinion about any of the people in this industry um, just based on their professional work. If they have a really good professional work quality, that's just restricted within the professional work quality. In terms of their personality and character and like and don't, <laughs> it's like everybody is suspect, okay? Before they are proven innocent because oh, all this industry is <laughs> So. I would also suggest everybody just have fun. It's entertainment business. It's meant to entertain you. It's not meant to uh, add load and pain on you and then just don't take it seriously and don't trust any of them being, you know, just as their screen image. So perfect and good. <laughs> yeah, you know, then just no. <laughs> no. So uh, two more minutes and we're going to be finishing this. And yeah, thank you for joining in this uh, live stream. Although it's on Sunday, it doesn't look like it's super sort of like more crowded than before. So maybe I can still do Thursday. I don't know. We shall see that for future stuff. And I'll still try to stick to my usual video schedule. Um, if I get other like things like like I need to take care of and I can really do videos on certain weeks so I'll just tell you in the video or maybe in community post yeah and uh, I do have projects on hand that I hope it can work out well if it if it eventually did I'll let people know but it's a long way to go before it could happen so in this industry anything can happen overnight you don't know about that that's one thing I learned over the years so let's hope things work out can you do live streams during weekends? Not that I cannot. Usually I just have this scheduling thing, um, but if I have to do it from now on on weekends, then I may have to just like adjust a bit of my usual schedule of drama uh, videos. 
I'll see how, how that can work. Not that it's impossible, but I have to work things around. Hmm. Could be a little bit tricky. We shall, we shall see. I need to work that out. It's just timing of things. <laughs> but if you have to mask that person all the time. That would be so much work from the platform and also the post-production. Because they have to track the face. It <laughs> constantly has. <laughs> that will make the drama really funny. Every drama will become a comedy if you do that. Just imagine. I, I'd say just put it at the beginning that it's unskippable. Like you cannot skip the part where it says this person got banned because of this and that. And it's their old stuff, right? So new stuff wouldn't be coming. I mean, I think that's enough. Everybody gets the message. <laughs> and you just completely wipe the existence off. Like it is a bit problem. And we can argue about whether that's fair because to that person, yes. But everybody, like the drama has what? 10 main actors, 100 supporting actors. Like they all get wiped out. So they go to future, I don't know, like audition for their work. And it's like, what have you to show? And I go, ah, I've worked on that project. I was like a male third, but um, it's no longer there. Sorry. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, it's so unfair. <laughs> post production. Mango. Mango has the worst, like the worst suffering post production team. Whenever there's a variety show, like somebody had, it. you know how they erased Tai Shu Kun was so funny. <laughs> I uh, I feel so bad for those post production people who have to go in frame and frame to erase somebody. I mean these days, yes, AI is getting better and better. So very soon, I think AI can take care of all that. You just click and say, find this person, every shot this person is in, erase it. And probably AI can do it very well. In, a, in, in very soon, time to come, we can do that. That will make their workload a lot less. Because AI now can translate, like for example, I'm talking in English. They can now capture me and then use my voice and then translate that into a different language and then generate a new video still of me talking, change my face movement so it follows the new language with my voice, speak it out, for example, in Chinese. So I could be having this video taken and then everything gets translated in Chinese, still in my voice and right mouth movement spoken. AI can do that now. So I mean, technically, if you can do that, I don't see it's so difficult to erase a person automatically from anything. <laughs> And yeah, so AI can already do that. Next step, like face swapping is so common now, right? Deep fake, all that. Like a deep fake of like changing language and speech is just so good now. So good now. So if you have a line messed up or you like in the future, for example, if you have a drama, you have the actor acting and then they change line in post-production of him or her. Now you don't have ha have to have a dubbing actor to like dub or that person to dub over themselves. You just have a sample of this person's voice. You have that shot, you put the right word and your AI changes mouth movement of that section of the video. It will be so perfectly changed that you wouldn't even be tell, like to tell the difference. And the actor himself, if he does the shot again himself, it will still be looking like that. No difference. That's like what they can do now with AI. So in the future, we very soon will not have mouth not fitting the voice problem happening because you dubbed new lines over the mouth movement. Because if you want to spend a bit money, you can change the mouth movement to match the lines still in this person's voice. Ha. How can you? So for the later comers of the uh, internet and the content creation business, how can you ever be sure the person you're watching is a real human? That person could be completely made up. I started this channel in 17 so that back then there wasn't knowledge like uh, technology like that. So you can still see it's a real human who is making the video. But if I'm starting a channel in 2025, you never know if that person is even like for real. Could it be a fake voice, a fake face, completely AI generated. You never know.
<laughs> oh, that would be so cool. Wild West of the, the age of like Aquarius. So Aquarius, right? Aquarius about is about electricity, information, mass media. <laughs> now we we'll go into the astrology and all the uh, crazy things about other dimensional things about existence. Okay, that should end <laughs> this prolonged uh, live stream. Thank you for joining in and I'll see you in my next video and um, multi-stan, email me. Please take care and hope you're enjoying the rest of my vlog that will come out this no, coming week, the week after. Probably, I'm just counting. I think I have <laughs> One, two, three more that, that, that are about Hong Dian. And maybe I'll put one more out, one or two more out about other things, but maybe not. We shall see. Thank you. Please take care and see you when I see you. Bye.